Okay, welcome back to Anime Savants, everyone. This week, I am Power. Damn, I was gonna be Power. Shit! Oh. <laughs> ah! Um, I'll just be Denji, because he wants to grab tits, so, like, you know, I'm with that. My god, what is he wants? this man-child is something My poor else. boy. I he did it all for the, for the, for the boobies. So, what's my call? We're up to episode, what, three? Four. Oh, three. Yeah. Three? three. Yeah, by yeah. this comes out, four will be out, but we're recording before episode three. And wow. Um, so you were definitely right, because I said like last week I was a little bit behind. But you were right about like the sketchiness of the show. Also, Makima creeps me the fuck out. Like the way one thing that I noticed is that the majority of her scenes where she's in and where she's speaking, they're silent. And there's a very creepy fucking silence. Also, I've noticed her eyes, the circles in the eyes, the color of the eyes, they look similar to Powers, who happens to be mm -hmm. a fiend. And so, uh, ugh. things are things, things are happening. I, I am actually very shocked. Because what you said last week about, oh, uh, it's supposed to be more, or it came off as more like, comedic in the manga and this is more serious it is more serious but also i feel like when the comedic parts do come through it's kind of like it's such like a, a jerk or like a shift into the uh, the other direction so fast where i'm just like did that nigga just say that like is it boobies like what like what do you what do you mean the the quickness in which his attention swapped from makima so basically being like, I can grope her boobs faster than Makima. So I'm going to focus on her boobs. <laughs> and that's just what we're going to do. And up until the point where she started getting on his nerves and she was just like, you know that nigga's not in alive inside of you, right? Yeah. And then he's thinking, oh, the boobs might not be enough for your ass. <laughs> like, damn, like, I don't know about that. Yeah. Um, re I really enjoyed that third episode, though. That was great. Well, not even that. Just the second episode of kicking the nigga in the balls. Like, not even just trying to fight. No, he... he. Just, I love Denji because he... That's my move. Just... What are you fucking around for? Just hit a nigga in the nuts. Keep hitting him in the nuts. He, can, he kept doing it. Like, the dude got up and was like, try... Like, got a few more hits in. Nope. And Denji... Denji didn't even try to basically be like, oh, this is gonna be a fair fight. I'm hitting you in the nuts again. Nope. And, and then he even over. said it. He's like, all you all you were going to do is hit me in the dick. Oh. Exactly. And that was great. So the comedic elements, they're definitely still there. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm just like, my God, my nigga. Like, you, I felt bad for him. And then uh, he started wolfing for Makima already. I'm just like, oh, man. Like, you kind of are very down bad. Like, mm -hmm down horrifically actually but i feel as though because of his situation and how he grew up I, at one point i'm like well i can't really hold this against him because he doesn't really have much experience with just like you know the world and life and women but now it's so weird to hear him basically be like yeah i'm pretty much happy in life like this is all i wanted i don't even think i can really ask more actually yes i can i'm horny nigga Right. Let me touch them titties. So <laughs> it's 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 interesting. I also really enjoyed the sequence with the fucking bat and power and the uh, the pseudo betrayal. Well, betrayal, but then also, oh wow, the fact that she literally was like, "Oh, this is what you felt like when you lost your your friend." She's like, "Oh, I, oh, I can feel that shit now." Oh, okay. And she's too busy feeling her feelings. So to like even like combat the damn bat or anything like that. I thought she was gonna mm -hmm. go inside of him and start ripping his shit to shreds from the inside. And she was just in there and I was like, damn, like, okay. Like if that's what we're doing. And then also I forgot the guy's name, the leader of their little squad or whatever. Um what was his it's name? It's like Aja or something like that. Yeah, how he had said something to Denji earlier about like making friends with the demons. And he was just like, "Are you sure?" He was like, "You sure that's not gonna come bite your ass in the bite you in the ass one day?" 
And what is what happened? Maki, not Makima, power fucking betrays him on like damn near first, not even first contact, but just it's fucked. It's fucked, yet it's entertaining and funny. And I'm actually very interested in seeing where we're going to go from here because it's such a simple push. I want to touch titties. Right. I want to touch titties. Like, I want I want it. And that's I'm going to do all of this to cop a feel. Right. Like, and he even said that he was like, I haven't even gotten to cop a feel yet. Uh, before he just started going nuts. So... Yeah. Also, Makima's little discussion in the car where she said the demons become the devil. Wait, the demons, devils, the devils. devils. The devils become more powerful the more infamous they become. Yep. So I feel like she's about to test that shit with see, to with Dingy to basically be like, how powerful can this be? Does this affect this nigga? Because technically he is a devil, but is he one? And how strong can you become? So yeah, just. Interesting. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting lore that goes beyond just the stuff that's on the on the page, I guess, for the the manga. This mm. um, episode three, I think, adapts up to chapter eight or nine. Um, oh, okay. And there's a there's a lot of um. Well, not a lot. There's a few conversations that are a little bit cut down, like the conversation that Makima has with the uh, government officials. Mm -hmm. But they kind of give you the idea that there's more going on with respect to like what her actual like plan and mission are, um, especially around these like other devils. Yeah. Um, but it's a really cool concept of the devil's power itself being related to human um you know human emotion or human fears which kind of like leaves a lot of room for a lot of different sorts of devils like how she discusses the idea of like a devil based on the fear of being killed in a car accident you know versus a devil of hot yeah. coffee or something like they're very different um so that that i think is one of the cooler aspects of this universe um the other theme i think for episode three was sort of coming back around to the nature of trust and Denji's relationship with the people who he, I won't say like imprints or attaches on, but at least has some kind of, uh, believes he has some kind, he can make a relation through obligation um, yeah. with. And the ways in which immediately in this episode that is um, shown to be a problematic. And it's deliberate even the way that both the chapters this is drawn from and the episode itself is structured because we start in episode three with both Power and Denji being lectured by Makima for basically breaking the rules. Um, and then uh, Power, you know, uh, lies and Denji gets pissed off. But you kind of, as you point out in that scene, Makima is sitting back that whole time. If you listen to like, even the way she talks to them, Mm -hmm. It's like they they are both very much in her sway, yeah. you know. Like she when she talks to um, power also, about like, like kids. yeah or yeah, which is a uh, at the very least she talks to them like they are not um, they're not people, you know. Mm. And she then kind of says so oh. in the and she even kind of says it in the episode where. Um, you know, like, I would say they're playthings, but she called them pups. Um, the idea yeah. being that they're this whole theme of Denji being a dog and more of a pet. It even comes back up when he's talking to uh, Power, you know, about her uh, flying off the handle, how we can't trust her. And she made the analogy to, like, you know, the only people, the only creatures I can get along with are, are cats. cats. But and Denji first is like, well, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I just want boobs. But then he mentions that you know he he kind of feels would feel the same way if she was talking about a dog. Again, this idea of like pets and the relationship, you know, both like what Power saying is, I can't get close to people, but I can get close to this animal. What uh, Makima is saying is that people are like animals, and she controls and plays with people like they are animals. Mm -hmm. It's a theme. There's a, there's a big theme there. And even Denji okay. sort of trusting 
uh, power in this episode only to immediately be rewarded with betrayal. Because again, power said she didn't give a fuck about anyone else but Castle. She told the truth. She did. It wasn't like the yeah. She didn't the the she didn't fully lie. It's just an interesting um, dichotomy. And again, the music was pretty subdued in the episode as well. So a lot of these scenes when um, like when she says, "I understand," when she looks at Denji, he's like, "I understand how you feel," and all that other shit. Like yeah. that. That wasn't like over overblown. It was just. Very, very uh, low key and mm-hmm. s- and sad. Uh, so I, I I enjoyed this adaptation of this material, and yeah, it is kind of like you expect the shonen moment, but really it's just depression. <laughs> That's about it. It is very depressed. I mean, it's kind of like I'm not gonna say it's bleak, but it definitely is like. A- it's not as upbeatish. Well, it got way more upbeat when power appeared. I'll give it that. But other right. than that, like the whole the car ride, the udon noodles, all that shit. I'm just like, uh, I don't feel like very safe. Like I feel like right. you're not safe, my nigga. Which he isn't. And she's at least Makima is telling it to his face and not just right. letting it go off. She literally told them she was like, "Yeah, you both will be disposed of if you're not useful." So, maybe. right. If we, and then in the middle of all that, Denji's like, "Give me back my tits." Give me back my tits. Yeah, which I feel. Well, no, he didn't cut. He cut. He cut the stomach open. Or it looked like he cut the stomach open. It didn't look like he just mm-hmm. like went straight through the stomach. So. We'll see tomorrow or this week, et cetera, et cetera, with the next episode. Also, those enders of the ending songs have been great. I've been liking them a lot. Yeah. yeah. Like, they're definitely genres I'm, I would not listen to. <laughs> Especially, like, that, like, the hurrah. What it, uh, is that? Was that metal? That was whatever yeah. that was. That was. It was a little power, power metal. Yeah. I was just like, wait a second. What the hell is this? But then it, it transitioned into other things and like the, the beat stopping and then the beat dropping again. I was just like, oh, this is this is interesting. I never would have listened to it if it weren't the ending song for this show. But this is interesting. So that's all I got for Chainsaw Man. Cool. Um, yeah. I don't really have much else. Like, I, yeah, I really like Chainsaw Man. I think it's fun. I just... Uh... You know, the way it'll they've get approached there when it gets there. It'll get there when it gets there. And also the way it's approached is a slightly different vibe than the manga. Not very much so, but I like it. I like to see a little bit of a um uniqueness in the adaptation itself. So I'm cool with that. Yeah. Uh what do you think about Blue Lock this week? I liked it a lot. Um well I mean I've liked every episode. But I think this episode did more so to build out the personalities of all the supporting cast. Yep. As opposed to just being like super duper hype. I did like how they they cut it in half though. It wasn't just a full like, oh, we're getting to know each other before our next match. And we're like, we're sweating our impending doom. It was half homeboy recognized that he did not make that goal by himself um, and showed us, you know, who he is. And also gave um isagi kind of like a boost because he had such strong convictions that he knew exactly what he wanted to do and he was gonna hit that and he also had a similar childhood background obsession with soccer and so i think isagi saw that also but when they got on that field i was i mean i'm always enjoying the soccer part i don't enjoy real life soccer like that but i was enjoying Mm. this shit up until the final point or the moment at the very end when they like scored the point and that Ga- Gagamaru like was nowhere near on my radar for these first few episodes. I was just like, oh, that's a weird nigga in the back. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he just comes and he doesn't take over the episode, but he definitely makes himself known. And it's just like, oh, they all, as they were saying in the episode, everyone's weapons. Everyone has weapons. So it's going to be up to Isagi to basically do what Nikki was doing, yep. which is know, memorize, and know the best moment to use what, whichever person's weapon, wherever the ball is. So I also thought it was very interesting that Nikki was like, oh, you, you're not special. I got that shit too. Like, bing, bing bong, bitch. Like, 
and I'm going to beat you. Like, we're going to win. But they lost their previous match. So why did right. they lose their previous match? But all of a That's sudden, a they're, very like, good together. Question. Yeah. yeah. Why are they, to, like, pulling it together for Team Z? So. Yeah. It, very interesting. Really enjoyed it. I feel a lot of the team is gonna get is still getting on my nerves because they won't stop talking. I love seeing Bakita like juggle the shit out the ball and be like ah that 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 pop it up. But I already knew that something was off and I called it. That's the thing though. I don't think the game not uh, not the game. I don't think the show, at least as far as like the soccer matches themselves, is trying to do anything super gotcha. It was clear that Nikki was calling the uh, the shots from the beginning. Yeah. If you paid attention, it's just yep. that for them to realize it was the turning point. And also the way that they hype up the the, the like the scenes. That outline that they did on Isagi when he kicked the ball and it like did the pan away from him. That shit yeah. looks so cool. Even when Gagumaru like got the ball and then straddled the fucking pole like that. It was just, <laughs> oh my God. Like Damn, okay, yeah, that does make sense. Because at the speed that apparently he moves, like apparently he can he has really high agility or some shit like that, but he just can't stop himself. So right. make makes sense. Makes sense. Still super irritating. Super yeah. Irritating. One of the things again I, I like is that they are in a way slowly teaching you bit by bit how to play and understand a game of soccer. Mm. Um this week was a little less on the nose because it dealt more with understanding each of the supporting characters as you pointed out i think um you know i like that our cast they i mean this is this is i think we talked about this before where the the series can either lean into super heroic kind of uh sports shonen stuff or Mm -hmm. it can lean into more like grounded realistic sports shonen stuff it looks like a series that kind of wants to do the first thing, but the core of it kind of has to be the second thing. And so when you, we meet all of the main or the supporting cast again, when they're in that meeting in the beginning and they're laying out, okay, this is what I'm good at. I can, you know, whatever. But if you actually like listen to the answers that they gave for the most part, none of it was like insane fantasy stuff, but you're dribbling. Oh, other I can jump high. I can do, you know what I mean? Like, it's not in and of itself crazy nonsense. Yeah. It's something that actually, even though this would never occur in real life, you could you could sort of see um, a person having a conversation like this and talking about, you know, what, you know, what they're good at. I mean, if you're a football player and someone starts talking about their combine scores, you know, I could run a four, four, whatever. It's like... It's no different than that. And then when you actually got into the game, their kind of first strategy was one that was still like that evolution from where they need to be. It's not adding to each other yet, but at the very least, they figured out a way to cooperate, right? In a fair way. So we've kind of moved away from like everyone selfishly um, fucking things up and moreover, more to now we need better plans. Now we need better strategies. Now we need to understand each other better. I thought it was really interesting um that you know that they're doing the main character trope where you know he's got isagi's got secret powers but the concept that they're using to cover that up is just that he doesn't know what he's good at which is a a pretty good one for being relatable to like a general young male audience because a lot of people that is their thing they they kind of don't know what they're any good at and then the fact that the idea of passing the ball is such a um it's treated with such negativity even though it is truly the core of playing the game of soccer um means that if he's good at it it still sets up a ideological clash with ego and the whole game that they're playing right now but i but i like how at the end he really did try to take the point as he should have and it was just deflected but then that deflection led to uh and you know a clean shot which got them a point but it was unintentional so now you're starting to see the building blocks of like how they're going to put this team together and even the other members of the team are not necess- they're not like ashamed that like isagi no. can pass the ball well it's more that it they care about goals to- right which is which makes sense so i'm wondering now when this game wraps up can they get a tie and technically still possibly survive 
Or do they have to win? I think they're allowed two losses. Well, it's two no, losses th- and you're you're out. I so think they I can do if, one tie. I wonder if they're just gonna tie this game in like a shootout. I think I think they're allowed one tie and then they have to win everything else. Yeah, because it's too early for them to be writing people off the island, especially if some of these other characters are going to stick around from the opposing team. Like we now met, what's what's his name, Neo or Noah or whatever his name is. Like, oh, Nikki. Nikki, there we yeah. go. We've now met that character who's sort of going to be like the proto Isagi, the smart guy who kind of organizes and and uh, runs the offense or or runs the plays on the field, like the field general. I think yeah. that's really what Isagi's role will eventually be. But you need to put him up against someone who's similar to him so he can understand, oh, this is what I can do just like this person. And they'll play it off like, oh, Nikki's better than me at this. But then eventually it'll be like, no, you've, you've also got that killer instinct, that mode. You just got to know how to harness that. And then that'll be your main character. It's a lot like Kuroko no Basuke where Kuroko's ability was that he, he was just facilitator. He was like a ghost. He yeah. wasn't the primary scorer but everything he did set everyone up like a good point guard um really should but like i think they're going down that road i'm i don't hate it at all i don't i mean like isagi's not like a rage monster type character so like him Mm -mm. just utterly annihilating people in the soccer pitch is kind of not in the cards which is kind of where i thought it was going from the way that the series started i thought he was going to turn into a rage monster that just drug everyone along with him, but mm-hmm. it's going in a different direction. Well, it's going in a more classic Chonin direction where the yeah. main character has to be able to be perceived as an underdog uh, in their, you know, all of the challenges. And it's not hard to do in a sports series. A lot of the time, the way they, well, I say they, but the way these types of stories will be set up is that the team itself sucks until they can come together and harness everybody correctly and play the game at a high level you know that's usually like the structure is that the main character is not the best at anything Mm -hmm. but or rather best at everything but there might be one hidden thing that actually they're really good at i'm i'm reminded like slam dunk right like it, like it's the same idea he can't really play the game of basketball but he's so he has some crazy physical ability you know that a lot if he's in the right position he can do it isagi's not really that character so i think yeah. this is closer to kuroko no basuke than it is to you know um slam dunk in the or or like prince of tennis or something where you have like the main character eventually becomes this overwhelming force i don't think that's the you know I don't think that's the direction. So I liked it. And um, I did notice that they tried to save a little bit of money in this episode in a couple of places, which I'm not saying is a bad thing. I, I want a show like this to be very judicious so we can get really cool animation where we need it. And yeah. uh, they were using a lot of like CGI and they weren't using very many locations so they obviously didn't have to do a bunch of like back. The, you know, low key, this is actually one of the most budget friendly animes out there because what scenes do you really have to animate? Like you have the room that they're like their their training room, which you see usually in still shots. You've got their uh, what do you call it? The the meeting room or like the locker room, which is like a flat gray, you know, whatever background is painted over, but it's definitely like CGI. And then you've got like the the soccer field, and that's it. There's like you don't have to really do anything with background, so they just find ways to save money, which I know doesn't make anybody else excited. I I kind of like it. And they were doing some CGI stuff with like the plays. One thing I that is missing, and I'll just leave it at this: is um, I'd like to see more visual pullback to show the whole s- soccer field when mm-hmm. they start getting into these more what I assume to be complex like strategies and plays as people start to lean into positions and they come up with plans because one of the hardest things is someone who is not like a not familiar with the sport to understand is like what the fuck are people doing like your eye wants to follow the ball but if you follow the ball in soccer you're not necessarily going to learn very much about the game itself it's usually about like positioning and people you know trying not to be off sides and like setting up for things I just hope that they draw back and show us more 
Like when they remember when they when they switched people and they're like, okay, now it's this other formation. Like stuff like that, and with a little more explanation, I think would be helpful. But I I I'm loving it. But yeah, that's about that's all I got. I mean, it's soccer, <laughs> so <laughs> I don't really know how far they're gonna go with it as far as. I guess making it like deeper or not deeper. I mean, you know more about it than me as far as like the soccer stuff goes, but uh, as far as like expanding Isagi as a character and stuff like that, we'll, we'll see. I want more from the supporting cast though. Primarily. Bobby. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, Spy family. This was a straightforward, uh, easy, not really important. Yep. There was a little bit of like broader story development, a little bit. It was mostly comedy. I mean, I mean, the show is comedy, but the uh, gags um, for this episode, and it kind of spent three quarters of the length on Anya trying to show off and get in the good graces of of Damien, and then the last half, well, the last quarter was like a, um, I think it's actually literally one chapter. Um, really. I think so. I I'm I probably should go read up to where they're at this season just to be sure. But like it's either one chapter or it's those like uh uh omake like extras that are sometimes at the end of uh like a like like I always say this but like a gag chapter because in this the it, the, the ending was um the handler doing like a little joke thing where she uh is showing off what a you know how great she is being undercover but then lloyd seeing that she left the tag on her uh Mm -hmm. jacket that she was so proud of and then the reverse where she is you know trying to have a regular meeting with lloyd about this mission all he can do is talk about his kid which is a very like you know i thought we were gonna get a lot more about like her background background but eh. yeah so the the real story progression was just the last scene with Damien where he calls his estate I guess oh. and and his he wants to talk to his dad but he, all he can do is talk to his butler and it's obvious and he has you know he has a moment where he knows the butler's lying to him that his father even cared that he got fucking punched in the face on day 1 and yeah It's so sad. I'm just like damn that he really does not give a fuck about your existence. And he doesn't even ask about his mom. So I'm no. just like, damn, where the fuck is the mama at? Like, what's... Who had these babies? And, like, what is... Well, I know the dad don't give a fuck at all. But... No. Well, I mean, we'll, I think... we'll see more. I I think that this might be the turning point later in the series where, in the case, something might happen and Damien will be like, this nigga ain't ever loved me. Let me go help these motherfuckers. Like... I feel like it may, that may, it might, it won't be the end game, but it'll be part of something big in the future. Yeah. My favorite part of the episode was that, well, there were two, two bits. Um, the first one was, uh, Becky getting obsessed with Lloyd. <gasps> oh, that was, God. that was great. I didn't see that coming at all. Oh my I, God. I, when I knew that there was going to be a joke related to when she saw the picture, I thought she was going to crap on her um, dog but, uh, yeah I'm but bald. when but when she was like she saw lloyd i was like who is this fine man <laughs> who is this even though it's sitting right next to his wife she's like is he single which is a very like adult reaction to that which is on purpose like obviously like a se- seven-year-old is not gonna be in real life is not gonna be asking whether some somebody's dad is single exactly. like that's that that's actually i don't want to say it but it's part of the surreal comedy that they like to do where they'll have like characters act out of their age or act out of their their demo just to get a joke off but like yeah. the fact that she's obsessed with them was funny and the way that they represent it was funny um so i like that piece i was waiting and... for her to i thought she was gonna make a military tank or something like that in the class and then she made lloyd but but then she added the military twist to it which like yeah, oh, got this did. combat suit right here right and like, then so are people gagged, also animals? Are people also animals? Gagged his ass, and he was like, "Oh sh, I guess." Yeah. Also, the fact that Damien made all that fuss about that 
fucking griffin and his part of the griffin looked like shit in addition to on yeah this dude was ass as well i'm not even i'm not his friend stuff looked way better yes which is which is funny and then it's still one anyway because it's like the nation ravaged by war and oh look like the griffin lost its wings and then they put a small destitute child in front of it (laughs) art it's beautiful and the 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 instructor is just trying to figure out what the fuck is going on exactly yeah but he loves lloyd everybody loves lloyd he was ready to give her a plus for making a little thing of lloyd exactly i was in the guns i don't know i really was expecting more from handler but maybe we'll get more of her later on that was I mean, I wish I, I wish I knew. I, I, so when we got a little bit of her backstory a couple of episodes ago, I was right there with it. I was surprised that they gave it to us at all because she could have easily been a very kind of one dimensional character that gets rolled out for moving the story along or the occasional gag. So yeah. the fact that it was like we learned a little bit about her family and the bad things that happened to her and her motivations and that then played into like her allowing something to happen i.e let letting anya keep the dog even though he was technically a uh, science experiment and a military asset like i was like okay cool it was just enough to justify that moment but then it kind of may have set some unrealistic expectations for what they want to do with her because every character in the series is mostly there for a gag and you know we already have our main cast so the idea that they're really gonna do a lot with her Maybe wishful thinking. Um, yeah. But that said, I do think that um, they did a lot with Anya as far as like not just gag comedy, but she had a lot of great facial expressions in this episode. Mm-hmm. Like from the moment when she was like trying to uh, get Damien to look at the picture. So she's like leaning over to like all of her little like snide faces and other things like it was great it was it was a good Anya episode if you're into that but the main story point is just that we now know that like Damien is really not that close to his father which Mm -hmm. might even imply that the plan of getting close to the kid is um unrealistic right because he's not his dad doesn't check in on him so even if Anya and him got close like that plan may actually just not work at all um so there is that and I think that's about all there is for this episode. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. I didn't watch the preview for next week because I tend to not. I feel like the previews show too much for Spy Family. I did enjoy the gag at the end, though, with Yuri and your. Oh, that was like good. Driving yeah. it home that, that, she, that, that this bitch can't cook. That she can't cook. And she's part of the reason why he has like an extremely high pain tolerance. Yeah, I figured that was the, the what they were getting at in those previous episodes. Because like when he would talk about how she would just beat his ass yes. in the house. <laughs> like, you got it. Something, something good has to... I mean, good in the context of why this character isn't dead. Like either yeah. you're, you're traumatized or you are the toughest SOB ever. You can, you know what I mean? And he um, is. Though, well, though they can't they can't hold their liquor though so like that's kind of the mm. other challenge um okay uh what else is there there's bleach bleach doing bleach things yeah. moving at like 100 miles an hour yeah yeah it it is i honestly was a little miffed at the beginning of the third episode because they did a three minute recap and I was We're like, already back. Why? We're already back to the recap. Why are we doing this? There's plenty of material. We do not need a recap. Like, yeah. we haven't even gotten that far. No. Why we are, are we doing this the series? Recap? Remember when we were like, oh, I hope that because Kubo's involved and they have four cores that they can maybe sit in some of these moments a little bit longer and... More or less, the first three or the first few episodes have all been, I would say, very, very, very close to the manga. In for for good and for ill, like the pacing is mm-hmm. like we're moving a million miles an hour. They're throwing literally dozens and dozens of named characters on screen. We're getting into and out of fights and confrontations in minutes. Um, people show up. They literally just fly into the scene. No preamble. Uh, 
th- like that's one of the issues with this part of Bleach is that there was so much stuff piled up that some of these, if you go back and read the chapters, some of these panels are just like, you know, in one panel on the same page, you'll have three characters. The next panel will be two different characters. The next panel will be like two from the first and another. You're like, there's a lot of motherfuckers here. So part of it is good that they yeah. that in the story that they're killing so many people because it's just there's a lot happening yeah i mean they gave all those people from the like beginning of the fourth episode names and i was like all these things are dying why are we naming them yes. right now like right exactly like what what is going on here and then uh, i don't know i just it, i i really was turned off by the first three minutes i was like i know that it's a big three shonen and i know that all of them do it but nigga, you came back off of like a break and you already have like, you know, it's not going to be like a year, like a weekly thing. You don't have to do the recap to take up right. time. So I think that the best at the so I agree with you, but I will say that by the end of the episode, I was once again feeling the things that I like to feel about Bleach. But that's because in essentially one scene, they kind of recaptured the energy. And that's the scene where uh the 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 Stern Ritter dude seals the the yeah. gate. The way that that was animated, the music, the um the uh like you knew you were going to a cliffhanger, but they they animated him incredibly well. You sort of leave it on a very classic like our our protagonist is in peril you the the blitz that they did to the first part of the episode just killing off or or putting everyone in in soul society in such a shitty place like they're talking about hundreds are dead thousands are dead like it's all fucked everything's fucked and you know we're gonna do the old uh uh bleach standby we gotta get ichigo here yeah let's get it like it like yeah. all that stuff which is very cliche and cliche for Bleach to lead up to the, you know, the kind of final last stand of this dude where he kind of gets one over on everybody was good. That's actually, if you, I, my memory of watching the series, is that's what was always awesome about it. Is that like, you would have these sort of, you'd meet it, you'd meet a bad guy, you'd kind of say, okay, how are our how are, are protagonists going to win? And then they get, they go back and forth one overpowers one one overpowers the other and then when the hero looks like they're gonna win the bad guy does something crazy and puts you in a mode where you know how this is going but you're like oh how are they gonna get out of this one yeah. which is which is like it sounds writing 101 but it's tried and true it's tried and true and they and this was a, a good moment and everything kind of worked and i was like all oh, right bleach when it's in its you know putting itself through its paces it's not complicated, but it's doing the good stuff in a very, like, competent way. I just wish that, and I hate to say this because people, you know, they complain about Shonen and especially the OG series. But I wish maybe this had been two episodes. Really? I wish this oh, had been two episodes. Oh, just to get some more, like, fight time between the To captains? get to establish much more in a much heavier way just how shitty the situation in the soul society was because mm-hmm. think of it this way right there's a lot of characters that people like in bleach there's fucking hundreds of them yeah. but like take like kyoraku right kyoraku doesn't really have a lot of moments either in the previous series or even much of the filler like he he's a cool character but we don't really get much out of him so to have like an episode where we literally meet we i think we saw like seven six captains a bunch of vice captains at least a like a half dozen new enemies facing off with those people to get all that into like 10 minutes mm-hmm. feels uh it's too much. It's too much even if you're going to write them off, like kill them off off screen. Like it's just a lot of stuff there where they're bouncing and bouncing and bouncing between these different fights, these different confrontations. I feel like the only one that got enough attention was Byakuya. Yeah, it, that is literally what it was. It was Byakuya and Renji because for whatever reason those characters are very popular. But I'm saying like we have we have essentially 
48 to 52 episodes depending on mm-hmm. if it's 12 or 13 episode cores i think that like stuff like this is where you kind of let the fat hang out a bit like give now i'm not saying filler but like if you're gonna have hitsugaya you know face off with an unknown enemy who can steal his bankai don't give me one minute of that well honestly right? i wanted to see everyone's bankai manifest like um Byakuya. All we got from Hitsugaya was just like a pose. We didn't yes. get to see the ice forming or anything. Right, like that. exactly. Be indulgent. Like yeah. you this is your chance. You got your series back. Like you kind of have unlimited time. Like don't don't pack this much stuff into an episode. Because the other problem with when you do when you make it so dense is that A, none of it really gets a chance to hit and breathe. So if you're mm. a fan of a particular character and they're they get 15 seconds of screen time doing something cool like i'm sure all the soy fun simps are irritated because like she had 30 seconds yeah. in this episode you might she as well might dodge as... poke dodge done right do i need to see six captains all come to the exact same realization at the same time no i do not especially if in the in the canon of the show and the and the writing of the episode you're just gonna have a tertiary character psychically tell them all the information that one of them learned, but then they didn't even bother giving Rangiku any voice line. She just like does a thing in the air and then everyone just knows what happened. And it's like, this is being rushed. There's no need to rush this. If you want to give her a hero moment to where she, you know, uh, tells all the information, why don't you cut out the other stuff with the other captains? Just do Byakuya, Renji, and uh, uh, Rangiku and Hitsugaya Focus on those two, have them both be parallel fights to each other, and mm-hmm. then give Rangiku something to do where she actually, you know, maybe she's got to escape in order to tell the information while guy holds the dude off with no yeah. Bankai, right? And then you have that be a dramatic moment where she actually achieves something, and then you can go cut to all the, back to the, you know, the Ichigo stuff, because they were, they, again, the, it's just too much, it's 10 pounds of shit in a 5 pound bag right we don't need that divide that shit up so we have the time go ahead and do it but maybe we have some new new stuff that they know is coming and so they're just like keep it moving until we get to the stuff that we actually want to expound upon on that I mean, note for me it's zero squad but okay go ahead I mean, let's move yeah. on well listen what are we even gonna see them this season no yeah we're not even gonna see them this season right but wait aren't they in the opening they're in the opening. They're silhouettes. I thought their silhouettes were in the opening. Mm. Um, uh, I have to go steps. back and maybe that is. The... Well, yeah, yeah, no, we will see them because the thing that happens right after the invasion is that uh, everyone has to get their uh, Zanpakuto reforged, right? And then that's how. Oh, see, I done forgot to... all about that shit. Then never mind. <laughs> wow, yeah. it really has been ten fucking years, my god. It really has been. Yeah, wow. shout out to joe fresh is for doing the full reread or the full catch-up read for bleach to get ready for this season in two did, he says he could do, do it, it in two weeks is he watching? well he says he could he could do one volume per hour oh i, so I saw him, him two tweet weeks. it i was thinking i was yeah. like he stream it already i mean good good luck my nigga my god that's a it's lot. better to read it than to watch it just keep it, it a buck because it it's like good. no filler it's just the shit but I think he's only going to catch up. So yeah, if you're just catching up, I don't think he's gonna read the Blood War arc. Or is he? Yeah, I don't think so either. But know. the Blood War arc is also short as fuck. So yeah. Anyway. So, but yeah, going back to what you said last what was it last week or the week before last? So about rapport, rapport, or whatever. Yeah. This is it rapport, rapport. Yeah. However they want to pronounce it. Um, I now agree with you. It should be the opening song. <laughs> I now agree with you. Because okay. I, it will, it like, they drop both songs on Apple Music, which I do like now. They're starting to release the opening songs when it premieres on the fucking anime, as opposed to like three months later, and then wonder why, oh my God, this doesn't have any streams. Because niggas don't care about it no more. Dummies. You guys just don't like money. <laughs> yeah, like, what are you? <laughs> this doesn't have any streams you release that shit when it pop when it premieres with the anime and that way niggas run and it's like oh oh my god i can't get enough of this 
<laughs> so I did the same thing with Rapport and Kitani. Wait, Kitani's his name. Or yeah, it, they're yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're both. For, yeah. yeah. So uh, at first I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna listen to the opening so much, and then Rapport just it just took over. It just it like tripled the shit. <laughs> Easily tripled yep. the plays. And mm-hmm. Rapport is old. That's an old mm-hmm. song. So yes. just, oh, wow. So maybe, maybe maybe they'll change it. You know, we got, I mean, we have three hey, other they, We ain't getting, we're not maybe that lucky. Maybe they'll weave it in there. Maybe it'll be the the iconic music moment for this. I don't know. Actually, it was really nice hearing the um the soundtrack this episode. The da 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 Yep. When that came in, I was like, ooh, the nostalgia. Oh, Bleach got some fucking bangers. The nostalgia. What's the one, the the classic one, the, it's like at the mercy of the enemy. It's the one that always plays like, with the strings. Yeah. Like, uh, like that one, that the, the remix they've got for this season is that it's orchestral. It's fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, but like I, I, if they weren't gonna make report the uh, opening, which was I think just a mistake, that's just my my feelings about it. Well, usually sh- you would expect that from a first episode. The ending theme is usually from the first episode. The opening sometimes, yeah, it's not the yeah. ending theme. Yeah. So if they weren't going to do that, I'm I'm now like. 75% upset that they didn't just stick with this as the ending theme and then use it to end off these cliffhanger the episodes. Is mock, though. Yeah, no, the, the ending, ending thing is fine. Thing. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't hate the ending theme either. I, I don't hate any of the the music that's involved. Yeah, you don't hate it. But if this was the ending theme, could you imagine like an episode like this one just passed where like Ichigo is like, you know, he's trapped, this guy's, you know, getting his shit off, all of his friends are down and like you don't know what to do and then you start you hear that guitar riff you know, start and then you just go right to the and yeah. like, no episode, don't end. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So actually, this episode ending caught me off guard. I I don't even know why it was gonna keep going because I didn't see the cliffhanger coming. I just thought that the episode was shorter because of the three minutes in the beginning. <laughs> so yeah, they um, give me back my three minutes. You stole that from me. Like, give it back. Like, this is not One Piece. What are you doing? But oh well, still yeah. enjoyed it. And we'll get more next week on non non. Yep. Um, what else is there? Oh my god. This fucking chuny motherfucker <laughs> is taking me out every fucking episode. I don't even know what to expect. Let me pre preface this with I am enjoy I'm enjoying the shit out of the show. <laughs> but holy shit, man. Like this is just this is so not serious like this shit is chuny so... chuny batman setting up his room to like impress somebody oh my God. that's why he needed the money because yes. he's buying all those fucking props yes just oh my goodness and then that girl is like writing his life story so clearly that's gonna become like a larger than life thing it's... but then he actually does like cool shit like he actually like unlike the joke of like him pretending to be this over-the-top character he actually then goes out and does some really cool motherfucking shit. Yes. Yes. Which... So, when the girls started showing up again, I'm like, wait, what the fuck? Like, we didn't get no... I thought you were going to meet them again. But so, right. they've they've been coming, and he still thinks in his mind that this shit is just not serious. <laughs> like, at all. He has nothing. And the fact that he literally was like, I'm about to play the best tortured mob character yes. ever. And was trying to outact the nigga that was yes. torturing him. Like, like yes. what do we do? What do like, we he's do? having fun doing this. And I'm just like, having this person is fun. an actual psychopath. He's having fun. We got stabbed in the leg by the three needles and he went backwards and smiled. I'm like. <laughs> that, was, that was too much. <laughs> That what was too bad. It wasn't even like for any reason. You know what it I mean? Wasn't. Like he doesn't actually believe any of this is real or serious. No. So the fact that he's like acting as much as he's acting, and then he's being observed, probably when he's not even paying any attention by his own people. Yes. 
who are like, I, like, and they're like watching him go through this. Like, he is the master of disguise. He this, knew everything. He, he knew everything. It's like, this nigga didn't know shit. He's just having a good time. I did like, though, the fact that when he came home from it and Alpha was like, are you going to kill them niggas? And I was like, of course he's going to kill them niggas. And he was like, no, he's like, no, I don't really care about it. And then he goes and kills them niggas. And I'm just like, okay. Right. Okay. But, but, but I will give him props, which is, when he went out, um, you know, again, he's doing this. So <laughs> the setup for it was um, he had bought all of these props to like make some secret. I don't know what it was. Just like a throne room for yeah, himself. Yeah, whatever room that was. He yeah. like bought this wine. He wrote a note, which I have no idea what the fuck yeah, he put in that thing. No, that's going to that's got to come back. Yeah, uh, there, but there's just so much in this episode because we're not even talking about what happened to the the princess getting her blood drawn and how she just kind of gave up on life and was just like yeah. fuck, like fuck. But like we're not, we're not and even there we yet. The introduction to the sister and you know, right? Sister, yeah. Like there, this. Do you remember when we talked about a minute ago in Bleach how it's like ten pounds of shit in a five pound bag, and the opposite is usually when shows don't have enough to fill the container, so it's just sort of you know. It, it, it's it, it feels like you're playing for time for somehow 10 million things happened in this episode and i was like oh cool <laughs> like i wasn't i wasn't mad it didn't feel rushed it just and it didn't feel like it was taking too long so it was like maybe 10 pounds of shit in a 10 pound bag is that what this episode was yeah so so he gets back from being tortured is it alpha who's there or beta i remember who's there maybe beta uh, Alpha uh, was there, and then Beta came to him when he there did we go. the room shit. Yeah, and she so, was like writing the paper or whatever. Oh my god! So Alpha is like, you know, just letting him know that they got a gang of bitches on yeah. route. Oh my god! When Be- when <laughs> yeah, when she was just like, oh, we we have 110, and he was like 110, and she was like, I'm so sorry, it's not. A yeah, problem. he's like, did y'all hire extras? And then the other girl was like, what'd you say? He's like, huh? What? <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> Like, cause he's still on this thing where he thinks that like they're just humoring him. They're playing him. with him, yeah. But it doesn't. But the only part of it that doesn't quite make sense, and I hope that they they just like find a good joke to play this off. We know from episode two that he is he's gone out into the world and he knows that he's like op. Like he is aware no, yeah. that he, that he is like just. A, a killer and he's murdered a bunch of people already and he kind of understands that the world has some pretty shitty stakes and he's kind of amoral about quite a bit of what's going on but when he's ha- when he's talking with alpha and beta for some reason he thinks that they don't they don't they don't know or rather he thinks that they do know that he's just playing around but that but i'm waiting for the point where he's like oh every time i thought that this was a, this eminence and shadow thing was a game it ain't no fucking game. And I almost got that feeling when he left the room and there were those people waiting for him outside. I don't think he was originally going to kill them. It was when they started talking about like, oh, you know, we here's this here's the princess's clothes oh, with yeah. her man, right? Yeah. Right. When they were going to frame him, that's when he was like, oh, I'm just straight murder these people. Like, don't worry about it. What I really, really liked about it and that I was going to bring up if it didn't happen... I was wondering, where the fuck is his sister? And then she shows up. Yep. And then they off-screen her getting her fucking arm yeah, yeah, shoulder yes. dislocated. Which I thought was a funny gag, because yes. up to that point, I thought that, like, you know, they were going to do something with her in this this little I story. I thought she was going to butt heads with, like, the, the princess or something. Like, she was actually going to handle them. And no, right. they showed the girl with, like, the... the pigtail the long blonde mm-hmm. stuff like and they never even showed her face they just showed the stuff and them talking in the background and you can yes. hear all of the fuck shit happening while they continue the search for the prince do you know what's interesting and uh, maybe maybe i'll take this back if they uh go off the rails of the show goes off the rails one thing that i've noticed about about eminence and shadow in a weird way they've done a pretty uh like careful job of power scaling various folks across the the characters that we've met Mm -hmm. right so like i noticed at the end of this episode um so spoiler alert Zeno's a piece of shit and he's part of this knights of the round organization that's clearly like the um the our 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 
uh, pantheon of, of bad guys of the week are going to come out of that organization. Yeah. And so one of the things that he says in the, when he's sort of um, dueling uh, the princess and kind of whooping her ass, he's like, oh, I've got, I, I, you're talking to someone who's going to be, you know, the lowest ranking member, newest, but lowest ranking member of this organization. And clearly he's like a level above her in terms of ability. Cause that's why he basically like one shot owns her. Yeah. Um, and we know that this is a power fantasy for our main character. So he is going to be stronger than every other character that we run into. So it's never really good. They're not until maybe like the last episode. They're not going to play the game of like, well, will he, won't he? We are watching this to have Sid own everybody. Yeah. But if you take him out of the equation, we've learned a lot, right? So we know that Princess is kind of below Knights of the Round level. We also know that Sid's sister is below that level as well. We have a pretty good guess that what is the princess's sister's name? The other princess, the yeah, the, the red, red hair, hair one. one, yeah. That she's probably at about the level of like one of the the um, round table yeah. cultist guys. And mm-hmm. then there's a bunch of other characters who are at or above that level. Probably like Sid's. I just call them the gang of bitches. Like I don't know what the fuck. You know, <laughs> but, there's a there's this old seventies like black exploitation film that I cannot remember the name of off the top of my head, but there's a line where it's like he this this guy watches he's like I got an army of bad bitches and they all know kung fu and I I always remember that line because it's so absurd right because you see all these women like in geese like like doing uh, oh uh my martial God. arts what? but like that when I saw the opening of the first episode or whatever the ending of the first episode where it's just like a squad of bitches and they all know kung fu I was like it's the same thing They're, like in in that respect. They've they've power scaled a lot of these characters to each other. So yeah. if you take Sid out of the out of the equation, I could actually see no no shit having a good time with some of the secondary characters getting into yeah. fights. Yeah, because we, because we'll see sort of like different abilities, and it's not deep. And There's we need no to be like, introduced to the girls on a deeper level as opposed to just yeah. Sid. Yeah, and if we don't get a lot of that that's also okay as long as like a couple of them are developed for like i'd like to see a lot more with alpha i'd yeah. like to see beta is clearly there for a gag at the moment right the gag is just that she's a sycophant for sid and thinks that he it's like the eins it's like um uh Chaltier. With like oh, uh, Eins- Overlord, okay. yeah, right, yeah, yeah. like everything. Because remember, like Chelsea was like writing everything in a book. Like, everything Ein said goes into the book because she's trying to learn how to not like make the mistake she made in the first season and get uh, owned, which is which did happen. And um, so like it's I see the little tantalizing bits of other better shows or other better stories that are popular sprinkled in here, like MSG. Right on this ridiculous story, and I'm enjoying it. And I also I'm looking forward to two days from when we're recording when uh, I get to see Sid just tear Zeno apart. I hope he one shots him. To be honest, yeah, like, I think that would just be move hilarious. Right on the fuck along. You know, yeah, what? I wouldn't be come... surprised if he one shots him and then he runs into the sister. Could be right, 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 right. Like the the, the his little Lelouch act, which is all this is. This is just like diet Lelouch. But like maybe slightly more of a a, a an oddball Lelouch like on he... bat salts or some shit. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's a good... perfect. I love it. Like I love it. Duh. Lelouch on bat salts. Yes, <laughs> that is what it is. This thing is crazy. <laughs> He's out of his fucking mind. So okay. Um, how did you feel about the B plot in the episode all around the princess being kidnapped by this doctor who wants her blood? I think it was just foreshadowing for the Cult of Diablo stuff. And, like, the fact that the guy said that the royal blood, he called it, like, demon blood or something. So Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that the royal bloodline something has something to do with the demons. I don't know if it has something to do with the Cult of Diablos. Mm -hmm. But then later on in the episode, they said something about the royal blood has the hero's blood. So then maybe the hero is in actuality, like half demon, demon half human yeah and like they didn't know that and so it's passed down in his blood and all that stuff like that so i mean i i don't know if that's true but um the way that the show was going 
I it, any plot line could come out of nowhere that's just so simple, basic, and just completely believable, but probably won't happen. Could happen, and then he'll deal with it immediately. And yeah, so I'm just it, not even surprised at this point, except for the cult of Diablos, which I feel like he won't even re- he won't realize until the end of the fucking story. Where he's gonna be like, "Oh, yo, this shit was real the whole time. Like, I thought these niggas was just playing." Yes. Um. You, you know what this kind of reminds me of? Uh. In a way, um. The the Manwa Triple uh, F class hero, um in the sense that the main character is this kind of like degenerate person, but he's got like this weird, very personal uh, set of morals and standards and beliefs that he thinks about in the world. I.e. he thinks that the world should be fair and fair just means you play by the rules, but the rules of the world that he lives in allow him to do a whole bunch of absolutely abhorrent shit that as far as he's concerned, he's just trying to get the best score. So he goes to the world doing things that are, I won't say like ob- always objectively terrible because some of the, a lot of the individuals he's interacting with fucking suck. But like his, the fact that his outlook on the world and every other character in it is different is what makes that, um, the comedy work, but then also like the shonen aspects of the story work. I feel the same way about Eminence and Shadow in that like Sid was very clearly not f- fit to live in the world that he originally lived in. He yeah. had some very crazy ideas and longed for things that could never be realized in the real world. And so his death and reincarnation was a blessing to him because he, but it's like, it's a blessing for a, a crazy person. For him in particular. Like yes, specifically him. for him. Yeah. A place where all of his delusions and all of his like uh, harebrained insane ideas actually turn out to either be real or have immense value uh, or, or possibility in the world that he went to. Like he wanted magic to be real. Magic is fucking real. He wanted, you know, to be able to tell stories about, you know, evil, evil heroes and lost histories and cults and whatever. All that shit is fucking real. But he he still has to create a fiction for himself because I, I don't know if, if, you know, his, he would hold up if he thought this was all fucking serious. But the best part is his morality is degenerate by like, our world standards but the way in which it plays off of the facts of the new world that he's in makes it fucking fun it's fun for him and it's also fun for us so i just like you know what fuck it if this even if the show just completely falls into pure fan service and degeneracy i'm okay with it like it it's the hot i called it top shelf trash on twitter it is it's top shelf trash insanity but it's like good. That. It's good. It's good. Yeah, yeah top shelf we, is a good one. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't talk about the demon, but that was also sad. And uh That was just, sad, <laughs> and I feel like it's definitely gonna get ripped to shreds this week. Oh sure. Like so one hundred percent. Well it need it, I think it's there so that some other character can have a moment. Yeah. Maybe one of the maybe the girl who who cut the building in half while she was killing them niggas. Like that I, shit, I was like, oh, we just do we we just doing that. I thought they were gonna be like, oh, we're going into the underground. They launched an all out attack on the city. Yeah. Yeah. So I want I wanna see what she's about over there. Um Yeah. But I don't even know what to say about the fucking series at some points. Like watching it, I'm just like are they really doing this? Is he really acting like this? And then I have to remember, oh yeah, this nigga's insane. Like he, does he just he no, just, yeah, the... <laughs> he don't give a fuck. A very crazy man. Uh... What else was there that I watched this uh... week? Bleach, Chainsaw, Blue. Duh, 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 duh. Oh, so I caught up with um, I'm the villainess, so I'm taming the. Oh shit! Boss. Yeah, how's that going? I fucking love this show. Oh my god. You want to talk about pacing? We are done. We're done with the initial problem. Episode four, we were finished. It's so crazy to me. But also, they ended... Should I be watching this? I would say... 
it li- like the first episode is definitely like uh like is it is it like generic but then as you go through it it's not simply her just being like i'm a boss bitch and i'm the i'm gonna get this done and da, da, da. no it's literally her using her resources recognizing where she's coming short and making up for it okay. and then even and then also they, they it, the show doesn't waste time that's one of my favorite parts it's not wasting my fucking time so they just they just get to it boom 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 the the end of the fourth episode gagged the shit out of me because i'm like wait what like where they got to at the end of the fourth episode is where some series don't get until the end of the season like Damn. they 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 got to they got to the point and then this this at the start of episode five i'm like wait what the fuck is going on because they ended episode four with like a, a like a random cliffhanger thing and i'm like but I'm really like, is the story over? Like, what are we doing? The next episode, they're like, there's a sequel to the game, bitch. It's like, we're going. Like, it's not stopping here. But then this one is even more so insane and crazy because you know how with like Mob Sakai, how he was in the world and he expected things to happen and because he wasn't interfering, he was like, oh, it's still gonna happen and it's not my problem. With mm-hmm. her, she she did interfering. She interfered with the first game and a few things changed and she was able to like, you know, grasp it. But in the second game, the shit from what that she like, you know, the butterfly affected in the first game is spilling over so hardcore into the second game that the second <laughs> game's the second game's heroine is literally turning into the villain. Like mm-hmm. literally turning into the villain. Oh, that's cool. Okay. And so I'm like, well, but they did a slow build to it. They didn't let us know that like she's an evil bitch right off the jump. It was just, oh wow. It was it was. I'm enjoying it. Like I'm really enjoying it. Um, they made me hate the antagonist for the first part of it very very quickly because cool. he's because he's one of those niggas that doesn't know how to give up and they but also. Oh. There is a history between he and the main character that makes it it makes it understandable why she would have sympathy for him, even though okay. she wasn't that girl, but she played the games. So she knows the guy's backstory. So she knows why he is like this. But mm-hmm. the the just desserts that he gets at the end of episode four, where it's just like, look at you, back in the same position that traumatized you in the first place. Now look at that. You shouldn't have been such a shitty person. Burn, gotcha. bitch. Like, burn. It's so enjoyable. To me, there's... Uh, okay. How do I say it? Nothing revolutionary is happening here. It's just fast pacing and moving... It's literally the pacing. The pay- They are just moving it along. Nothing right. sits too long. The gags are great. The gags go away when they're like, okay, it's been too much. We get it. Like, it's it's not fun anymore. We're, we're moving on. The character development is meh. Honestly, the majority of the character development is the main character, and she's not really developing. She's just like figuring shit out, and uh, yeah, it's just it's it. I'm just I'm having so much fun with it. Like I I literally look forward to watching it because I'm just like I what is this? What's gonna happen next? Because it's not gonna happen how the game proposed it to be but how are you going to respond to it and what is the twist like what is the twist that is going to you know swap people's positions Mm -hmm. from the things so just overall enjoyable didn't wasn't expecting a cross-dressing heroine um but i got it and it's amazing and yeah i I, I don't know if a lot of people are watching this one this season, but if this got a second season, I wouldn't even be surprised because it's just really, it's just consistently enjoyable and good. Like, good. But that's me. That's that's me and my rom-com isekai shit. So my taste can be completely different from y'all. Y'all might watch the first episode and be like, bitch, what the fuck is this nigga talking about? But I so it. I So speaking of things that uh, you mentioned, you said the word revolutionary before. One thing we have not oh, talked about boy. is the witch from Mercury. Listen, I'm going to need Gwell to sit the fuck down, my nigga. To stop is, taking L's? This is That's so his job bad. now. Oh he's, got the, he's got the big fat grunt suit, you oh. know? He's that's always there to take L's to the slender, but you know. But he's been taking non-stop 
And like it's to the point where I'm just like, I wouldn't be surprised if you had an early mind break or some shit. Because, <laughs> like from you, sucking too much. From <laughs> sucking so much. Also, it just it just solidified my this should be an email point again. Cause they did it again. I was like, you niggas don't need to be talking to each other to each other's faces. You can True. do a you can do a Zoom chat, you can do all this shit through text. Like text actually has like a paper trail. Why mm-hmm. didn't you t- we they all have the cell phones on them that has like everything. Why are you calling me to this room for you to clap your hands in front of me? Why bitch? are you calling me? Like this I room? just that that's just my one gripe. I'm like y'all gotta that's get rid of these wild, scenes. That's a wild one. I like it. It's like get rid of these scenes. I'm so I'm mm-hmm. over them. Like I'm over them. But so Letter really kind of wasn't like super heavily involved in this episode, which I kind of enjoyed. Uh-huh. It more so was focusing on Elon's backstory, which I feel like they're doing all this shit to build him up as like another strong supporting character for her. Um, but also the oh, you know, and I know how he's gonna die too. But let's let's oh, continue. I know. Oh, I just know it's too easy. If they don't do it, I'll be irritated because it's a layup. <laughs> but but go on, go on. Um, but the revelation that he is um, like a bio, what it what like a. What, it's their Arthur equivalent of a cyber new type, yeah. whatever that is. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. a cyber new. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. as soon as that was revealed, I knew exactly where the episode was going because he felt as though there was some connection there, and there, there was. He was like, "Oh yeah, well, you know, if she can. If that's a Gundam, and she can pilot, and that means we must be the same. No, you're not the same. So then the question is, what is your gonna? What is going to be his reaction to learning that you two are not the same? The same kind yes. of existence. And it was very much so, like, de- not, de- I don't know, that that scene with his, the, the eyes coming through the hands and shit like that, mm-hmm. it's just, oh, okay, well, what's going on? But then also, it was emotion that he, had de- he clearly does not show regularly. Mm-hmm. So, of course, he needed to take it out on somebody. But all, the way that he walked past her, he was like, yeah, I knew I didn't like you. I'm like, damn, nigga, like... You can't just drop that shit after you two went on a pseudo date. And then mm-hmm. Fiorina coming through being like, bitch, I told you, don't trust these he, niggas. He, like, that nigga evil. evil. Yeah, he's like, he evil. Like, what the fuck you, girl? I t- Stop talking to that nigga. <laughs> Did you not listen, bitch? I told you, do not do, not do this. But Oh, man. Also, Gwell, it's just like, I, I, I feel like the audience for this Gundam is probably a little bit younger than the intended audience because it it definitely seems like with the high school setting and like the hoo 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 like some of the like more comedic parts they seem a little bit less like on the mature side and more so like we're we're trying to appeal to a broader audience so I just don't want them to draw out this Gwell Sundari shit mm-hmm. I I don't really. I'm not really down for that. I'm down for him processing his emotions and recognizing what it is. And maybe even like Choo Choo being like, bitch, you like her. Get out of my face. Like you're so fucking annoying. Which also yeah. thank I like that they're being consistent with Choo Choo's bonnet. Like, thank you. People be loving yes. that bonnet. Yeah, I'm just like, well, it's such a nice little detail where it's like she she's clearly mixed. We don't mm-hmm. know what she's mixed with. But she wearing a bonnet. Uh, we're saying that because the the black anime fandom just claimed her. Yeah, but we, like oh, yeah. she's probably just a Japanese person. But she but I get it. She but she got the she's got the puffs that cares. She got about, the puffs and the bonnet. Yeah, yeah, her her hair's a little bit curlier. Much curlier. Right. Them yeah. niggas don't know about nigga shit. I, 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 I'm, I'm but not. But she's from Earth, and we don't know the. I'm right there with you. Right, yeah, we don't know. We don't know. The we don't know. And like all that kind of stuff. Like yet. Cause that listen, leave it to them. They'll bring it up. I mean, we and there's actually a nigga, like a nigga nigga. Yeah, there's a bl- I, there's a black man. There's yes. a black guy on the ship. So I'm just like, oh, so we're not just going to do like the Genshin Impact whitewashing. Great. No, I mean, there's Love it's it. a pretty um, diverse cast visually. You know, Middle Easterners, various types of Asian people. Yeah. Whatever, like they they're and doing, that's and you know, I thought that Choo Choo, or I just assumed that Choo Choo would be mixed because, like, there are a lot of mixed girls with you know curly hair like that. That's just like, but then there are also 
ethnically like Caucasian women that just have sure. very curly hair like that too. No, so, I'm not saying so I'm not saying she is or she isn't. I'm saying that the fact that people have decided that she is, or on the other hand, may have decided that she's not, it shows you that what a if you have to have an opinion about a character or a character design one way or the other, I think that's usually a good thing because well, it means that. You know, you have to think about it. They've done something to get your attention. Well, even so. from the first episode, I just said that I really enjoyed the character designs for Witch from Mercury, like, all around. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lot more diversity within yes. the character designs as a whole compared to any other Gundam series. Yep. Um, and you can yeah. see the influence that Build Fighters has had on this production. Yes. Um, yes. That they've taken some aspects of the way they present um, their youth focused storytelling in build fighters and, and uh, in small ways incorporate into Witch from mercury um i mean the target audience for the show is probably like 14 or 15 year olds um I think so, so yeah so and, and that is actually generally true of most of the stuff that we're even talking about like the the target audience for chinibio batman aka eminence and shadow is 14 and 15 year olds it's not the niggas are eating adults. it up they're eating it up yeah um, but I actually had a, there was, I had a lot more to say or to think about and then to talk about on this episode than I initially thought when I watched it. So, you know, cause at a very high level, there's not a whole lot that actually happens. Um, essentially, mm -hmm. um, you know, Elon is introduced as, you know, uh, we get a little bit more of like his backstory. He's an artificial, uh, what, you, what was the word they used? Like. Artificial human uh, or something. Artificial human or, or something, which which pre presumably just their version of like a cyber new type. Basically, um, th there are things that went unsaid in this episode that I'm not saying I wish they had done a bunch of exposition about it, but that like there's there could be some more depth there. So if you start with the Elon thread, we figure out that he is engaged um, and paying attention to following around and, and getting to know Suleta, not because he has a genuine personal interest in her, but he's because he's been to. ordered to do things by the pale company as run by the dark haired woman. And then that like triumvirate of old blonde ladies, which I thought were looked really cool being that they all are wearing the same clothing. At first I thought, do they have the same face? No, but it's no, possible that, that it, but it's also possible that either they're all related or, or that they are, or, or they're a clone of, per, of a person progressively younger by like 10 years i don't know i'm just i'm just noting that that's the aesthetic so a, a bunch of really interesting stuff fell out of those conversations number one they are tracking uh uh astral they're pretty convinced it's a gundam yeah but we they, find out that they've been none they've of the been old proof of gundams is showing up yes and so they're confused yeah. And they want to know, do they solve the problem? The problem, going back to the, epi the prologue episode, is that the advanced uh, computer that is necessary in order to unlock all of these special abilities to make something a gunned system um, also has the side effect of just blowing out the minds of the people who use it because it's just overwhelming. So one thing that the show kind of hasn't done I think a, a great job of is explain that is yeah not just even explaining but like elevating the importance of what breaking through that per, uh, permit level actually meant in the prologue so, it wasn't just that she was able to pilot this the the Gundam but theoretically if this is something that could be uh duplicated it would revolutionize you know, a whole bunch of things, including medical, you know, medical technology and health and these weapons. And so, so actually going back to the very beginning, we know that Suleta is special, but it's now clear that she is incredibly special. So my question is, I think this is where you're going, but I might be wrong. Is Suleta like modding the system naturally? So like once she pilots it, it's okay for everyone else to pilot it. Maybe, and that's kind of what I meant by like they've they've buried the lead a little bit as to like why the the Gundam is special, why she's special. Yeah, like like because if that's the case, because we kind of get it in this episode when Elon is sort of um in a backwards kind of way laying out his reason for life, he. We, we're told he doesn't feel emotions. We're told all the stuff. He he claims to follow orders. And he doesn't really have, doesn't care about anything. But in actual fact, his entire motivating 
ideology for his life is that he's willing to be a completely obedient tool because he believes that's the way to change the world by solving this major problem, breaking through the barrier, whatever the the phrase that he used to describe effectively um, stabilizing the gunned AI system. Yeah. And and the way that, that he was meant to do it was to be an experiment, survive all this shit, get this permit stuff built into his body, and basically brute force it, right? Like... Whatever way Suleta did it is the opposite way that the Pale Company and what he has. So when he finds out that she actually achieved the goal he was supposed to be sacrificing or had already sacrificed his whole life for, she just did it and she did it without the pain and without the agony and suffering. It basically voided all of his, not only his life, uh, his life mission, but also everything that he clearly had went through to get there, which is why when he gets out of the ship, he's a totally changed person. It's not just that he's like taking out his frustrations on Gel. It's that like he needs to beat or destroy Suleta because she is a rejection of everything that he has um, gone through and experienced and told himself that he was doing for the greater good. And she did it. And is like well adjusted and is loved by her mother because he's like, you know, trying to make a connection with them on an emotional level and he just cannot do that. So I say all that to me that they kind of bury the lead on how serious a situation that is. And we start to get little dribs and drabs of it again here in this episode, not just through Elon's backstory and all the stuff that he does in the episode but also the backroom dealings that are happening with uh suleta's mom now we've got this new nigga out here like so there's some machinations going on like they they are aware of what's happening and they are interested like this is not this is not really peril for suleta it might be peril for the people who are standing against her mother which once again i feel like we're gonna have to have a reckoning because i don't know I, no, I know. Whatever the mom's interest is, it is not Suleta's interest. It's Suleta not, wants to go yeah. check things off her little high school fun list. Her mother is like, I'm getting revenge. You you kill my fucking husband. You, you know, did whatever you did to, to, you know, my friends and everything else. And we get the last kind of shot of that when Suleta's mom runs into the other woman from the Pale Company. Where they're like, oh, she there's a second witch. Sensei, yeah. Yep, and she says oh, that's yeah, her. Oh, a that, second witch, yeah. Which I like. I like the idea that we were saying that the witch from Mercury is uh, Suleta. But actually, I think they're using that term to refer to anybody uh, who understands and can build gunned technology. Mm. Because because Elon's mecha, the whatever, par, Parfract or whatever it is, is, uh, is a Gundam. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah. So, and they didn't call him a witch. I, and I think they're just talking about the people who are able to make Gundams. Oh. Okay. Which, and then maybe, uh, and maybe as the series goes on, those two ideas of what the witch for Mercury means can so come into, up, yeah, come into conflict with each other. Where so maybe her mom is the about- witch. The ma yeah, the mom is the witch from Mercury and the end game antagonist then. Yeah. But Suleta is also the witch from Mercury because the other way to think about what it means to be a person who can control and f- and develop and fix a yeah. Gundam or fix a gun system is someone who changes things, somebody who is a, a catalyst for change. So there you go. You've got your various witches. The witch from Mercury is the story. So I'm mm-hmm. I so there's a lot that's there. That's just like they don't go into it. And I'm like, I I just wish that maybe in like the prior episodes they made it a little bit more clear about what it, how important it is that as that uh, uh astral is stable and that you know that means something about what Suleta was able to accomplish yeah. or why that system is special. That's it. I mean, I'm not we all asking know for superpowers. That Ariel isn't gonna get taken by Elon. Elon's gonna get his ass. I don't know if he's gonna get his ass whooped, but he's definitely mm-hmm. gonna be humbled in a sense and. Yeah, we'll we'll see. So or so I said I yeah. They could sideswipe our asses and well, no. Also, did you see this episode that they Suleta got complimented on her piloting skills? Yes. Not and I remember you saying that that 
you didn't want her to just depend on the Gundam stuff. You wanted her to actually be like a talented pilot on an issue yes. to that. So. Yes, and they, they and I think as she her character's gotten more confident, they the writing around that character is more traditional in the way that they put respect on the name of a good pilot. Mm. Um, okay, so I said at the beginning, I know how Elon's going to die, and it's the same death. It just depends on what side of the story you want to roll with. So remember that the two avenues could be. We know that the well, first of all, we know. That, like, all this school shit is going to get split up and these characters are going to be deposited yeah, on different sides of around, some conflict. Yeah. So, I posited that Gel is basically going to become, like, Suleta's knight. Yes. So, the, and- so, usually, that character, you know, he's got, like, the heavy arm style, you know, mobile he's suit. He's got the spear. So, right. And the axe. He's, like, tanking. He's going to be tanking shit. So, characters like that often die one way. Which is the heroic last stand, right? Like, Same if he dies, Greta. right? Yeah, exactly. But or like the rest, or the rescue mission. It's like I'm that's really how they interested die. Interested in seeing if there are gonna be other Gundams. Oh, like, definitely, one hundred percent. Like there have to be. I mean, it's Gundam, so there have to be other Gundams. But how are they gonna pilot them outside of Alon and Suleta? Right. So, so go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so so I think we talked about Gail before. Elon, after this episode, has one of two fates. I don't think that character should, can survive a series like this. So if he is on Suleta's side, then we already were shown in this episode... He's the sniper. That, yep, right. We, we were already shown in this episode what his sort of, like, limitations are, which is, like, whatever the cyber new type process that they put him through, he can control up to a certain depth in a Gundam system in the AI, like, you know, the, the levels. Like, yeah. I think Suleta got past level 31. He got to level 3, right? Yes. Is if I'm remembering right? Yeah. So... One way he dies is that if he's an ally of Suleta, he pushes himself past his limit to do one heroic thing, right? And his brain explodes. Just you know, you blood. get yeah, yeah, yeah. You get the it's you get weird. the like, we did it, we did it, and then he's like pat, silent. You know, yeah, silent. You know, you get the shot in the cockpit of like the you don't Blowing. see his face because the because it's like blacked out a little bit, and you just see the blood pooling in the helmet, right? That's one death. That's if he's the. You know, he's become a, a, a fr- an enemy became a friend. If it's the other way, then he ter- he gets the berserker death, right? Because he's a cyber, he's an artificial, whatever, artificial human. So his motivation to push his suit and his brain past its limit is to overcome Suleta, which we've mm-hmm. kind of gotten the taste already that, like, he just utterly rejects her. her. So... You know, you could get that character that keeps coming back over the course of a, a series. They get crazier and more, like, less human and over time, pushing themselves. In a horrible way. Right, right. And that they, to in order to defeat our, you know, they make a very good foil for the antagonist because they've got all the same powers, but they got them wrong. And so, you know, you die in the epic clash with, you know, your oh arch God, nemesis so at the end Gundam. of the series. Who else did that shit? It's in every it's in every oh, fucking series. Yeah, you know, like he's not. Uh, th- th- there's other like Gundam tropey deaths. There's like the Ace Pilot death, the one where they never get like the special suit. But whether they're a good guy or a bad guy, they overperform the limits of the thing, doing something crazy and then die. Like Norris Packard from Eighth MS Team. Like, y- th- like there's there's a lot of these things you can pull from but those the character archetype for elon is either the the enemy berserker or the the stoic uh over over achiever it's one or the other and both are basically the same death so i'm pretty sure he's gonna die overloading his permit system for some reason or another that that's gotta be like i want that to happen i probably what's gonna call it the um the pale company women there's probably yes. some. They probably put some kind of override in that shit where they're gonna be like, "Nigga, like, yes, go max." It'll, it'll right, and that life. could be one. That could absolutely be like you know how he gets the how we get the berserker death where yeah. he actually came to understand and res- and respect and like Suleta, but he has but no then, autonomy over his body anymore. Right, he has no more autonomy, and you know it, that whole like her 
heroic villain where it's like he knows that he's wrong and he can't stop himself but he but he actually just wants to know who the answer to the age-old question who's better who's right is it me or is it you and so you you know you go go past your limits and die technically still doesn't have like a rival rival so no right so it's possible. The only problem I have with that right and now. And explains why in the first episode he recognized that it was a Gundam off jump. Yeah. Yes. Um, and they kind of, again, they bury kind of the lead because in episode two, they were pointing out how um, because she had a like a, a bit system, when they were analyzing the tracking information off the bits, they were like, huh, that doesn't look like it's an automated program. And then in this episode, like, yes, it's definitely not. It doesn't match any, like, AI yeah. heuristic, and it's too organic. It must be, somehow, this is like a human brain, which is what the gun system is essentially doing. It's like multiplying your brain power and allowing you to, just through intuition and your mind, control the suit and all the features of the suit. Um, man, there was one other thing I wanted to bring up. Oh, right. Uh, so when it comes to the direction that character goes one problem with him becoming a major antagonist unfortunately is that we he actually does not seem to have much of a strong inner inner life or inner conviction and no. usually for a main bad guy you really want somebody who has very clearly defined ideology so that you can have them clash with suleta and like unfortunately for, dad. like me arena herself or you know herself. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, like someone who who because is every episode so far, she's told Tuletta not to do something, and Suleta's right. gone and done that shit. Yes, and and like in an exasperated way, but like, oh man, this is my inner writer. If if we go down the road of it's actually Suleta on one side and her homies versus her mom and another set of her homies, please let Suleta kill her mother. And then have grown up Miarine become the char clone with the mask. Oh, that that's Gundam. That's Gundam. Wait, that's out no zero too. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> that's which all is Mecca. also copying all, Gundam. All, that's all Mecca. It's all Mecca. What do I say? But you know what I mean? Like, how sick would that be? Like, you see the grown up version, and it's like you don't. You know it's Miarine because you see the hair. But it's got the fucking mask, but you know that also Suleta's mom is dead. Yeah. And whatever she was up and to Suleta was like... doesn't know that she killed her mom or some shit like that. Right, right. It's, yo, right. She thinks her mom died. Maybe they do like Earthfall again or like a reverse uh, reverse colony drop. Because that not that kind of like the, the story they're telling? Mm. Like Earth is oppressed and all these like extra Earth... Um, a reverse calling drop would be crazy. I think that would be what fucking she, sick. Oh my god! Like the, a combined front of Mercury Bro. and Earth. Oh my! Even against- better. What if that's the reason why the Suleta breaking through the gun system was so important for her mom in the end? Is that that system is the only thing that could do the reverse colony drop? <gasps> Bitch. Well, here we go. I mean. We, we, this, none of this is going to happen. This is just me having fun because I well, love no, what they're doing. you've watched way too much Gundam <laughs> to be to be like, it could absolutely happen. And then someone's going to basically pull the episode up and post the clip and be like, Pro- maybe, this nigga maybe. said this years ago. I'm happy. I'm happy if they, if, listen, if it's, if the whole series is just winds up being Gundam High School, I won't be upset. Yeah, I won't be. but it be. cannot stay that. But it, like, but it can't be. I'm seeing like Kakumeiki Valve Rave. Where they were... Oh, my uh, God. In, <laughs> uh, Valve Rave the Liberator. Yo, where, Valve Rave fuck, fucked me up. <laughs> I didn't know what I was getting into. I was just no, like, Nobody did. I was there's like, a, there's is, like, ep- there's like a random was, episode. It's like halfway through it. They're like, oh, yeah, by the way, all your, all your, your suits are powered on your own memories. Every time you use them, you lose part of yourself. I thought it was a cool mecha show. They had like different colors. It looked like like a little bit like more jagged. I was like, oh, those are kind of cool. I like and it just kept going and it just it just it just kept going. <laughs> the ending actually, I was just like, damn, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what the fuck to say about this shit. Yeah, this that is, one this, is this, this nigga in a catatonic it it would have been fine if they just killed him. 
Right? If he was just yeah, dead, that would and then you better. just see the girls, you see the girls who survive like after the fact, like, oh, you know, he, he died for us. And no, this motherfucker was just a vegetable, and still alive, and the girls are still alive. I do think he chose the right the the right girl in the end, though. I do think so. There was the the mean one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The one who was in the yellow. So I was like, yo, that's that's yes. actually what should have happened. She was down. Like, she if, was. If, yeah. From the moment from the moment that she became one of the pilots, it was like yep. she's a ride or die. She's a ride yeah, or die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were trying to sell you on that the 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 girl he was into from the beginning, like his like sweetheart, whatever. And I was like I was like, nah, it's too vanilla. Give me that dark bitch who'll do what has to be done. <laughs> when they went to Earth, I was like, Yes, it's, it's a wrap for you niggas. Like, mm-hmm. you niggas are not getting out of this, like, sane. And it's yeah. Ridiculous. So, I I don't think <laughs> that Witcher Mercury is going to go anywhere near that. Like, anywhere near that. But I do think that in a typical Gundam fashion, they're going to leave the high school. Because, like, Hakume Eki Valre, they left mm-hmm. the high school and shit just went down the toilet. So, they're going to leave I'll- it. Eventually. I'll give you the the two branching paths. You can either go Gundam Double O, which they did kill a very significant, a major, a fan favorite character at the end of the first season mm. when they the, uh, lock on, like they killed Lock on Stratos or whatever. They, but then they brought him, they brought him back via his brother, you know, in the in the sequel. But they killed that character as yeah. a part of his his arc. So that so you go down that road where it's more. I would say that's the traditional safe. Um, alternate century Gundam team up, yeah. Approach, you know that like I I I always felt like Double O was like a sanded down Gundam Wing. Like a lot of the edges on Gundam mm. Wing got sanded down. To and Double O is good. I love it. It's a lot of fun. Great opening for both seasons. By the way, Daybreak's Bell. We're, we don't need to go back into that one. We've already talked about that last year. Um, or you can go Iron Blooded Orphans, right? And if you go Iron Blooded Orphans. The, the death I was talking about for Elon, that's the Mikazuki death. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. go out like a hard bastard, but by pushing yourself to the absolute, beyond the limits of, of life and technology, and just go out in a blaze of glory, like, that would be the Elon, if that if they go that road. So you can, those are your branching paths. I don't think it'll be as extreme as... I don't think it's going to be as extreme as Iron-Blooded <clears throat> because yeah. we were getting hints about Mikazuki like early on. Like once the bodily function started stopping, I was like, ooh. Yeah, when his eyes stopped working. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this, you, you, are you. Uh, nothing <laughs> beats in season one when uh, Mikazuki went to his homeboy and who was, he's about to give up in space. And there's that scene where it's like they're in a cargo container and he's like, he basically does the whole like Captain Phil, look at me. Like, you see me? Like, we don't we don't be talking about this shit. I'm getting fucked up right now. The only way oh, this y'all. works Yeah, the only way this works is if you, Orga, are as one hundred percent committed as I believe you are, you've told me that you are, and that everyone on the ship is following you. If you are not one hundred percent committed, look what you've done to, to me. me. Yeah. To me. And I was like, man, this autistic nigga is reading his ass, just reading him and reading him. But that's what made it so good. Like, that's... Yes. I feel like we're not going to get to that level of, like, intensity with Witch from Mercury. But no. I feel like they will... It will get way more serious. Like, it, yes. it is coming. I just don't know when. Like, they could... So they're not... Listen, Tomino they didn't write this. Our asses. Yeah, he didn't write this, so everyone's not gonna die. But I'm Every, just saying, everyone's not gonna die. We're <clears throat> definitely expecting death, maiming, loss right. of some kind of faculties. Um, two two major characters that we have met already have to perish. I don't. It doesn't matter. And if they who kill they two, are, two people, are gonna get real mad. Yeah, they're they gonna be pissed about that. But I, but I think that, that like the death count will actually be relatively low for the series because itself. Of the setting. It'll be low, but like they are going to die because this series is not afraid of body counts. The no. prologue, the way that they were killing niggas, except to let a mur- like as a baby. Happy birthday to you! I feel like we've done this so many times. Yeah, the prologue, but the prologue set the tone, so that's yeah. why I have faith that like we're gonna get back to it. I just don't yes. know when, but 
Cause they homeboy like. They literally had niggas like shooting inside the space station, like b- like bullet putting holes through yes. niggas inside. Yes, it was real. It was real shit. It wasn't yeah. just like people blowing up in mobile suits off camera. It was some real ugly deaths happening, and it was happening in large numbers. And they were not afraid to go there if they have to and go she there. She hasn't even met back up with the dude. They haven't even shown the guy that killed her daddy. No, no. So that's they what I'm saying. That ass. like there are going there are going to be deaths in this series. And I'm not saying everybody's going to die, but if I had to put death flags on certain characters, this is my thinking in terms of like the tropes of yeah. of Gundam. What do they what do they like to do? What would fit with the setting, especially if you're doing the whole Paradise Lost thing where, you know, the school is a safe place and that is meant to get you invested in all these characters and then you rip them we rip a few of them away so oh, that God, now I'm, the please, audience please, doesn't please, please, please. believe like they don't they don't think anyone's safe i hope they don't do what what's macaulay did fuck guilty crown did and the school <laughs> becomes like the base that was that was oh. i did that part i think a lot of people checked out of guilty crown because they just weren't ready for whatever that was i kept pushing was. i kept pushing i kept pushing and in the end i was just like Okay, <laughs> like, what? Where did this background and like last Christmas and all yeah. this stuff? I was like, none of this was foreshadow. But okay, no. like if you want, well, because like the school. If we're gonna talk a little bit about Guilty Crown, there's like three distinct phases of that story. Yeah, there's the beginning when you think it's gonna be very like superhero, super heroic, mm-hmm. where it's like, oh, we're gonna get all these new powers every week. He's gonna meet a another one of his like classmates in this fight he's gonna draw out the weapon he's gonna get stronger da, da, da. And they're kind of like clicking up and you're like okay i kind of see the direction then it there's like the depression phase where they all get trapped in the school he realizes power is like devouring people a lot of his classmates just want to die like they just don't care anymore you're he didn't depressed. care anymore yeah everyone's super fucking depressed and then like the end is this like action movie romp where it, it, they go back to they take the 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 rebel, you know, um, yeah. whatever organization, which had sort of been off to the side. It he gets they get incorporated like into it. Seven episodes. It's yeah, like, and then yeah. it's like it's balls to the wall. They got mech suits. They're like, you know, playing these gigantic attacks on these bases. The final two episodes is like a. If you watch them now, knowing how it ends, it feels like you're like white knuckling the end of the story because like everything is happening there's like a four-way battle in the generator room and like niggas turn into crystal and like other wild shit you're just like that is not what i thought where we were heading or where we should have been heading right when i saw this nigga flying like there's like six episodes really but they're like flying in on that damn base in the met the 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 like mech frames and I'm like Yeah. <laughs> like, where did it come from? Where, where I don't hate it, but like Okay. <laughs> Alright. I don't think we're gonna I think Witch for Mercury is a little more grounded. They're telling yeah. one story. They're very cautious well, I don't know what I, don't know, I was gonna say cautiously, but they are um very methodically mm. introducing us to individual characters, giving them about an episode and a half each for us to get to know them, and then just getting them to their moment. Like, I don't know, like, Choo Choo's, I'm not saying she's done developing, but like, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did she, no, we, she, we met her, she's a, she was an asshole, then she kind of watched to let her go through some shit, they fought together, and now they're kind of cool, right? That's a little story for her. And we know a little bit about her stuff on Earth. We'll probably get one and a half more episodes that really get into her situation. Maybe it's when she's an adult or they, they go back to the... Yeah, you know, that's, that's good. I definitely think we're getting a time skip. Yeah, I agree. I don't know how uh-huh. big it's going to be, but I definitely think we're going to get one. I want it to be a five-year time skip. Five, five years? I want Why five, five years? Why five years? Because right now, I think Suleta is 15 or 16 years old. Oh, so you want young so, adults who let us? Yeah, get me to get me to twenty one with everybody. That way, you can age them all up. You can do a cool, you can do cool stuff with everybody, and then you can hit your adult themes, and it can be age appropriate characters for that, and we could change yeah. the whole world again. Reverse colony drop. I am now on. I'm on team reverse colony drop. 
completely fuck up the whole order of what we thought that world was and then have all our characters duke it out in the 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 remains for whatever reason i don't care maybe that oh <gasps> oh goodness okay maybe i should okay maybe i would okay yep. well, no i'm gonna we're say good that we're then. good so then maybe maybe that's gonna happen this season that'd be and cool then the right at the end out for the remains ends up being like their future story where it's yeah. like the parents and shit all got wiped out and now it's up to like the young adults to like make a new order and this is where the ideologies come into play with Suleta and Miorine separating. Yes. I'm I'm with it. That um that Maybe. that's my now if it doesn't happen, I'm not one of those people who's like, Well my headcanon didn't yeah, turn out that, to be true. If it doesn't so happen, it I'd be happy because then I'd basically be like, Well what's next, nigga? What we, where we Yeah, going? Uh, yeah, give me some d- Outthink you don't have to outthink me. Just keep telling the story they're gonna tell. I'm enjoying it week to week. That's all I got. Yeah. I mean <laughs> I, re- I remember when you said we were gonna cover this and you're like, yeah, we're not gonna talk about that much about it. We're just gonna like touch in on it occasionally. And every fucking Psych. week so far. Psych Every fucking week so far we are in the trenches with this shit. Because it's 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 really fucking enjoyable. Like, especially when I compare it to like Kyokai Senki. I'm just like, it's a completely different experience. You know, Kyokai Senki could have worked out if they had just committed to letting the main, letting the setting be a little more brutal. If it mm. was one where, like, people, because people do die in it, but it's like, n- the main characters never kill anybody. And oh. yet, people around them often get killed by accident or by, you know, like, it's very much not interesting. I guess I'll put it that way. It's just yeah. not interesting. And I've been eyeing the, it because I'm like, do I want to go back and try to finish it? But no, nah, I I would say it's missable. Like the some of the the mecha designs are pretty are cool towards the second half, but mm-hmm. I didn't find myself really caring a lot about much of the central cast, and that's the problem is that if you don't really care about the central cast, and then you start not being able to take the story seriously, at least in its yeah. own merits and it's like why are you watching it there's nothing i'm not looking forward to anything i'm just passively absorbing a thing i could spend my time doing something else like i don't know watching uh what's it called call the night or whatever that one that we missed the vampire one yeah call the night yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, call yeah i'd rather i'd rather like watch call the night than deal with that so yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, what? Uh, watch Yurise Yatsura. And it was not watching it. If you want, oh. like, just oh yeah, I gotta get on. If that. you just want fun, watch that show. It, really? it has all the charm of the original, but it's visually updated, so it, it just moves fun. But it has like you feel like you're you're watching a retro show, but with like 2022 production value, <clears throat> and it's good. It's still like I find myself all the time seeing episodes that I've seen before, essentially. But like the jokes are still funny, and like mm. you know, uh, the characters are broadly unlikable, but they're unlikable in that Seinfeld kind of way, where that's the oh, <clears throat> the joke okay. is that these characters are are kind of assholes, or they're kind of slaves to their own. Because isn't the the MC is an asshole, right? He's a he's he's a womanizer, but like he is legitimately trying to date his girlfriend, his human girlfriend. He's just yeah. tied up with Lum to the, and she's incredibly jealous. So like, oh okay okay yeah like is it is it absurd? Absolutely. Is it like you know uh, if outside of the comedy would the story really hold up? Probably not. But, like, there's so many... You watch, like, two or three episodes, you'll already get, like, 90% of the recurring gags. You'll look forward to seeing certain characters show up because, you know... It's like when you watch Ranma one half. Like, in the first couple episodes, you're... You might think that you're going to be more interested in the romantic angle, you know? Mm -hmm. But but really, it's like when Hapusai comes in or when, like, uh, uh, uh... What's her name? Man, Shampoo is in an episode and you're just like, man, that's great. Or like they're battling over rhythmic gymnastics, but it's really a uh, allegory for the fight that they're having about boundaries at home. Or like Rama oh. desperately trying to run away from Ryoma, who doesn't realize that like the girl version is his his rival. 
like the man and that and that never gets like resolved it's just it's just a gag and so that's how uh yubiko takashi stuff works is that they're, they're all the characters are so charming and they're all so flawed that they and they and they're thrust in these absurd comedy situations right when you get bored with someone they're gone and then someone else is there and you're laughing again then you're looking forward to the character that you have not seen now for five or six episodes and it's just like it's just fun it's really really fun um i hope they remake mesani koku because that's like a you talk about slice what is of that life one about? So it's about a bunch of um, early twenty somethings who are in like a like a apartment that they have to share. And they don't really get along with each other. That's why it's called his and her situations. It's like a comedic slice of life set. It's really based on Rumiko Takahashi's actual um, experience when she was an animator um, or a comic artist. That she lived with three uh, three other people in a very tight space, and so she wrote it kind of about that experience and it's really really oh. good it's not as long either so if you had to adapt it, it's probably like three seasons worth she's so fucking talented jesus it's sickening how talented wow. she is Jeez. Um, sickening so yeah uh <laughs> <laughs> so we talked about a lot do we have any recommendations on the week um my recommendation is going to be star ocean the divine oh Force. okay so it is good okay we i gotta get I'm it i'm not going over the Oh, oh, I no, I like it. Let me be uh-huh. really clear. I like it, but I mean, as you saw on Twitter, I was like having my misgivings. And I was just like, I don't know, man. Like the things look good, but when I bu- I bought what is it? Integrity and faithlessness. Don't I want to talk about that? Oh my fucking god! I don't think I've ever put a game down that fast. Like that was worse than. <gasps> That was worse than Tales of Zestiria. Oh. And Zestiria, I fell asleep playing Tales of Zestiria. <laughs> That's bad. Uh, the no. fact that I couldn't even get, like, Tales of Zestiria, I at least got all the characters. I didn't even I, get that far. I didn't far. get that far. I didn't even get that far <laughs> in um, Integrity and Faithlessness. This game, Battle System. Fun. Fun. I don't know if I'd recommend doing it on the hardest mode because right mm-hmm. when I was getting cocky in like the regular mode, mm-hmm. the bosses showed up and I was like, wait a second. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. The, bo- the Hold bosses on. will put you in I've, your place. I've had, I've had several bosses like wipe me out. Like them niggas will literally just be like, I'm going to AOE you as soon as we get into the battle. You better have something ready. So I'm like, oh. I actually have to think. I I don't. I can't just button mash. I mm. like the um the flying mechanic, especially in battle. Which at first I was just like, oh, I'm just gonna button mash and kill these niggas and blah blah blah. But eventually, you have to master the blind side thing, where it's like if you're flying towards someone and they're looking at you, if you change directions, they get stunned for a little bit. And so that is almost integral in several boss battles because mm. if you don't stun the boss. The 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 frequency in which they attack, your healer will not be able to keep up. Oh, okay. so I was like, okay. Also, another thing that I'm enjoying about the game is it's de- it's old school RPG style. Um, or no, I wouldn't say old school, but it's an RPG style where it's like you need to play with every single character. They split the characters up often, so that means you can't like once you get a character, you can be like, oh, I'm gonna have this character in target. No, no. They're going to take that bitch away eventually. So that means you have to get used to two or three people. And then, like, you have to know how to fight with them and, like, what their skills are. And mm-hmm. uh, it's also in your... It's also good to know the other characters' stuff also. you know. But it's, mm-hmm. it, it's just been a really enjoyable experience. As far as the story goes, it's typical Star Ocean. The beginning is just very... Just like, you just got to go. You just got to get through mm. it. Because... You're stuck on the what 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 the fuck do they call the planets? The underdeveloped planet shit. Oh, You're stuck on yeah, an underdeveloped uh, planet. Yeah. And like you don't have access to all of your technology. So you can do all this shit, but you got access to some stuff. So it's understandable, like why the beginning is the way it is. But they even, you know, made me gag a little bit with the storyline 
with particular moments where I was like, oh shit, like, is this really happening right now? Like, okay, cool. Like, they made the underdeveloped planet part cool. And then they actually pretty well, I think they did a pretty good job of expanding it into space and why they're bringing those people into space with them. So, and I, that's the part I'm at. I'm at the part, I think I'm at literally at the middle part because they said that the first half is on the planet and then the second half is space and stuff like that. So, or that's what I've heard. Regardless, I'm enjoying it so far, but I have seen a lot of people not pleased with it. I think depending on which platform you play it on. Um, I'm playing it on PC. I know a lot of people said like, oh, the cell sh the shader loading and all that kind of stuff like that. And there's like frame rate drops. I've, I've experienced those things, but mm -hmm. they're not so common as to basically be like, I can't play this shit. It's just like, <laughs> oh, I noticed it. Like, okay. But also, I also recognize that Star Ocean is not like a mainline series for Square Enix. That's true. It is not. So I, I understand that they did not have the same development um, materials and opportunities to everyone else. And honestly, it does look good. There definitely are parts where I'm just like, ooh, this look kind of not crazy, but like there are certain parts of the game that look really, really nice. And like, and there's like a a filter that does a really good job of making the less than stellar models work. Cool. And then there are other parts where it's kind of just like, okay, so they just either they, they forgot to come back to this particular part and you know, something happened, blah, 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 whatever. Anyways, once the spaceship showed up and started shooting each other, I was happy. So, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the, the vibe I got from some of the reviews. That and that's kinda... what changed my mind. I I watched like seven reviews and mm -hmm. the general consensus, I was like, it just seems like everyone's enjoying it. Like, yeah. they're still enjoying it, even if it has its flaws. And I can get behind that in general, sort of as a uh, um, selling point, mm -hmm. you know, like that. It doesn't have to be a triple A title as mm -hmm. long as it's as long as it's fun and in but the I space think it's where a good step in the right direction for the Star Ocean team, like Tri Ace and shit like that, is mm -hmm. a step in the right direction because they needed to. I thought that integrally, integrity and faithlessness was the last one because I was like, yeah, boo, this ain't it. I don't. I wouldn't be surprised if y'all. I I more. think my this is gonna sound absolutely ridiculous. I hated everything about that game, and I think. It's rare that anything elicits that level of uh, disgust and irritation. Like, it was just an uninspired game. And I think, the, really, the character designs are what finally killed me. Like, alt, like oh, the just, big boob lady? Like, everyone was making such a big deal out of that. When, you know, before it dropped, they were like, oh, look at the fan service. This is another yeah. whatever. What they didn't really cover was that it's not the that the main cast designs were, like, significantly better or worse than anything else. It's that everything looked like shit. I don't mind if there's, like, a big boob lady. But you see, like, the main character's outfit is absolutely fucking horrible. It's one of the, it's, like, just look it up. So Go look up Integrity and Faithlessness and then look at the actual character design just most uninspired shit yes just uninspiring who who made this yeah. like the boob lady who <laughs> that's bad i that's forgot just, her name sort of, it doesn't fucking matter <laughs> like if, like they were trying to go for like lulu from final fantasy 10 oh. with, but with cutouts yeah and stupid hair but like if you want to make a big boobed woman just make a big boobed woman. Like honestly, at least her design is memorable. Everything else, the whether it's the supporting cast, even like the random niggas on the on the in the towns, completely unmemorable. Completely. Why do I remember yes. fucking little pixels from like Star Ocean Two as more like Claude Kenny, little pixelated Claude Kenny, ten times more interesting design, ten times. And then you fight like lizard aliens, like that's your. Primary antagonist. Okay, just, so I don't now care. I'm now I'm okay. Now I'm looking back up everything and remembering why it was just a meh. Because didn't you, you got all the characters like super fast too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Every, you get everyone like really fast, and there was like no develop. Okay, now see, I'm going back down. Well, I will say that the characters do roll in in um the divine force at a. In the beginning, it's kind of fast, and then eventually it like slows down. And they spread out the last few, 
So I appreciate that because it gives you time to like experiment and get used to the ones that you already have. Yeah. Um, and then it goes on from there. There are guest characters, which I like that also to basically like keep the character count down so that you don't have to learn like what, like seven, like 15 niggas. It's kind of just like, no, they're a guest. They'll help you in battle. They'll eventually. Yeah. That part, I think, I think a lot of the systems were fine, but it, they weren't great either. And it just felt, not only did it feel budget, it felt budget in all the wrong ways. If you don't have a, if you're making a game like that, it needs to exude character. Mm-hmm. character character like i hate to say it you know because it's a it's a it's an unfortunate um an unfair comparison but like bayonetta 3 is out this week and yeah. like you watch five minutes of bayonetta 3 granted Oozing. half yes and, and half the game is a fucking cutscene, but so is star ocean too like it's you're right it's just oozing character and they're squeezing every ounce that they can out of the poor little switch and it's just not working like the game technically is a, is i'm not saying it's a mess it's just made for the wrong system but even then you just like watch it and in the first five to ten minutes of this game you get so much character character if someone looks at bayonet and says oh the graphics suck you are a piece of shit you don't I deserve care. art you don't deserve it character i do not care it's i haven't gotten it yet myself because i was gonna get both of these at the same time i was like i can't play both of them and so i was like if i get star ocean and i hate it i'm just gonna immediately get bayonetta and i'll come back to star ocean maybe like you know during the winter like you know a snow in day and like marathon some shit no, mm-hmm. it, it it grabbed me. It took all Saturday. It took all my Sunday. Like I was I was I was in. I, it was it was very enjoyable. But on that same note, I just the thing that really got me about integrity and faithlessness is which so last hope. I played a chunk of Last Hope. I didn't finish it. Mm-hmm. But um Star Ocean 3 was my first Star Ocean. And we all know how that ended, which made yes. me basically be like, wait, there are sequels? Because I'm pretty sure I remember the end of that shit. <laughs> like, I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure I remember the end of this shit. Yeah. But okay. But I think what they're doing now is they're not doing it like sequels. They're just saying this happened in this universe before Star Ocean 3 happened. Yeah, that's pretty so, much it. I, I Star Ocean 3, I'll be honest, is the last Star Ocean I actually liked. I mean, yeah, that, that was my it used to be. It used to be my favorite series because I'm an OG. I go back to the original Star I, Ocean. I got one and two on. They released them on PSP, right? PSP, yeah. Them. Yeah, PSP. Yes. I got one and two on PSP. Didn't finish them because I guess I was just too used to... I got introduced to it through three. And then playing... I feel like if I played it on a console format as opposed to like mm-hmm. a handheld format, I probably would have been more like into it but eh. yeah no star ocean 2 is one of my favorite rpgs of all time because of how much missable stuff there is and the fact that depending mm. on which character you choose you get different uh uh you, you have access to sorry let me rephrase that based on the choices you make in the beginning there are some characters you just cannot get oh. d- depending on those choices there's like a oh. choice you have to make well, I will say with Divine Force, it there there are two clear like there are two separate paths. Yes, yeah, the for, the that one is the the princess or whatever from the yeah, planet, and the other one's the princess, yeah. and one is Ray. And and, and I, by the way, I hate Ray's head. Yeah, that's why I didn't pick him. I was like, I hate, I do not like his hair. The I princess, hate his uh, hair. Leticia looks great. The whole is day. there any way to like just change his hair? I'm. I was kind of hoping that. You know what? This is the problem with Xenoblade. Like, you give me yeah. hope because of whatever happened with... I'm not going to do that. It's a huge spoiler. But, like, in Xenoblade 3, there's an option to change a certain character's hairstyle. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. can't we add this? And it's story-driven. So I'm just like, can mm. we add this to a lot more RPGs? Like, I'm right there with you. Like, I, can we just I, I give to... them the option to, like... Or they go through a moment. Like, not cutting the hair, but Ray's hair does piss me off. And... Because of the budget, it looks 
super blocky sometimes. It, it looks look, horrible. I it saw like, like ev- I was getting, I, like, I saw the preview and I was like, oh, this is cut. And then I just saw, there was some angle they had of his face and I'm like, who the fuck did this? He has this? the worst hair in the game because everyone else's hair they have it has like wind effects like Leticia's like little yeah. like, little hair bangs right and his there. is like fucking just yeah uh, it's just solid so I pick Leticia's root and uh, there are things that happen which the characters are splitting up there are things that happen during on like with Ray them being split up and you they do not explain that shit like mm. they basically are just like we are convening right here this is the climax moment and we're moving on there's no oh what happened. Blah, 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 or no flashback. So they basically definitely are encouraging you. If you want to know all that other shit, you're going to have to go back through the other one. Yeah. No, I, like, I, 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 it's not necessarily fair to, like, constantly complain about something that cannot change. I get it. Yeah. But, like, god damn, help, like, help a brother out. Like, it's possible to make a really good Star Ocean game. It really is. It's really possible, and it's just like these. I think these... this is a good step because I really enjoy the battle system. Like this one is way more active and engaging than any Star Ocean battle system I've played, and that's one of the main reasons why I like it so much. Is because okay. I just like the fighting. I like the okay. fighting. I like the fighting with different characters. I like creating the chain combos with different characters, the rush stuff, upgrading the skills. Um, playing with the crafting system and the, even the mini game with like the, the chess like mini game thing is um Isoa. That's pretty yeah, fun too. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Also, am I playing it a lot? No, but I have a shit ton of pieces so that whenever yeah. I do want to go fight niggas, I'm gonna be like, I got all the strongest. I got in sucked the game. into a triple triad back in the day Ooh. in all those Final Fantasy games. So you know, I love that shit. I love the. The mini game that actually can give you like uh, items and stuff to uh, to do things. Yeah, but also be, there's yeah. a dual purpose in a soa because you can equip the pieces as right, accessories. correct. Yeah. So, so once I, I, I found that, that cool. out, I was like, "Yo, this is lit!" And of course, in a typical try not not trifle, but um, in Star Ocean fashion, like crafting, crafting is how you get the broken shit. Like, I've gotten some real good accessories that I feel like I shouldn't have gotten. But it was because I dumped a whole bunch of foal into crafting and like leveling up someone's crafting skill way for before I updated their combat skill and it paid off for me in a nice way. So it's nice right. to know that that stuff is still there because I remember with Star Ocean Three, I broke the game with Mia. Is that her name, Mia? The... Whoever the one, the gun girl. Oh yes, yeah. I broke the game with her. Like I saw something on Game FAQs. And they were like, oh, you just do this, and you do this, and you do this. And she's just like, she just like chunks niggas. And that's right. Which, by the way, I like games that are broken. Give me yeah. a broken ass game. Yeah. Yeah. But I, but they, you have to play it to get to the point where you can break it. You can't just like break it outright. So I, I enjoyed mm. that part where they were like, you get her, and then you have to get these materials, and then you just gotta, you gotta farm, and you gotta craft, 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 and pray. So. Overall, right. really enjoyed it. I also really enjoyed the Final Fantasy 16 story trailer. Um, oh, true. Yeah, can't wait for that. Like, I really got to get a PS5 because holy shit. Yeah. But that's my recommend, my long ass recommendation for this week. Oh my goodness. What are you reading, watching, slash playing? Uh, not, I'm, I, I had an easy week. I did stumble on a series called Cloud Walker, which I'm enjoying, but I don't know. Yes, I. I don't know if it's um how how unique it is. Uh, it's a it's a very like uh, psychic superpower driven manhwa, but okay. the first couple of chapters don't do it justice. You kind of got to get a little deeper to oh. see what's going on. The main the character is kind of good with these glasses. Yeah, like it 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 picks up after like chapter three or four, which is usually not something I. Uh, admonish people to stick around with you know to be like mm-hmm. oh you, uh you should you should hang on to a series if you're not really enjoying the beginning because it does take a little bit of investment um it it masquerades kind of as a almost a cop drama um with like magical oh. powers and everything else but it's interesting but the thing that's really had my attention is not so much this i got i i got caught up caught up on three or four months worth of uh tower of god we're not gonna not gonna 
Wait, Tom Brown listen. came back? Like I was be- I was behind by a lot. Oh. Yeah. Wait, behind as in where? Like when like, he left with Leviathan? Uh the stuff that's happening on um what's his face's home base. The Oh, local Bia? Not local yeah. Bia. Um, no, no, no. The other one with the glasses. Yeah, the gla- the one that Rachel's fucking with. Yes. Oh, wait. So, wait. more. Okay, I'm behind too then. Okay, damn. What? I thought he was still on... I thought he was taking it like an indefinite. Okay. Oh, I don't know. I don't... I just... I was behind, so I caught up. <laughs> okay. You got to the point where they announced the tournament, right? Yes. They proposed... Is it fur- much further than that? Uh, maybe it's like five, four or five chapters after this. Oh, okay. Then, yeah. Then I'm like a little bit behind that. Okay. Yeah. So he has um, really that, come back. And back yeah. So I was like, so but I got back to thinking about how good Tower of God is. And then uh, Ember Knight got picked up by a regular translation group. So mm-hmm. there have been some really, I think, I don't know if they've gone back and retranslated some of the earlier chapters. I wish they would because the, the, I, I want to recommend Ember Knight every single uh time it it like i have an opportunity the problem is the first 40 chapters that are out there were translated by a single person who was using google translate because no group would pick it up so they're not great quality and they kind of (gasps) make i'm so behind what is this bitch okay okay yeah all right, let me, let me catch up. Well, I know what are we talk about next week because what? Yeah, the we don't fuck? we don't gotta go into that. Oh, now. I just uh, saw that right now. Oh my god, I'm mad. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Oh, but wait, what <laughs> about that? What about that other one that you were reading? Fuck. The are you still keeping up? Wait, no, Ember Knight. Yeah, Ember Knight was the one that you said was like. It was on the level of like Nen. You just said something. Yeah. Like that, right? Yes. Yeah. Their their thing is um. They're like restrictions that you yeah. put on yourself. So it's very similar to Nen in the, um, the like the core of the of the ability. Yeah. But it's not scaled in the way that Nen scales. So it's not to the extent that like, oh, I can measure this person's power. There are some really out there abilities with some very uh, strict restrictions that make the fights that the people who are using them when they get into them, it's less about the ability and more about the restriction, if that makes any sense. Like, you know yeah. how in... Like figuring in out Hunter, what their restriction is and taking advantage of it? Ex- exactly. Or a character may use their restriction as a power, if that makes any sense. So, like, what? our main our main character has no real abilities. Yeah. He's faking that he has, like, all the strength that his brother had but we learned very quickly that like one ability he does have is the ability to fake so he can project the killing intent of somebody who's much more powerful Ooh. than he is and so the so basically he gets through a lot of his fights by bluffing other people he's in combat with so that they second guess what they're about to do and he though he may have a much Right, and so it's it's like a it's a chess game. Every even some of the fights where the guys are totally overpowered, it's still chess. Everyone's trying to figure out how they can get an angle psychologically um, on the fight itself and what everyone knows about the fight. Like for example, there there are times when characters don't even wind up in conflict, but they're so concerned that they might trigger the other person if they do the wrong thing that that in and of itself just becomes mind games that everybody is constantly playing and it's not just with enemies it's also with allies because there are some major characters who you we don't know what side they're on and neither does anybody else really oh how's that other one with like the the boy middle school the shonen one the straight up shonen one oh okay yeah um shoot what was the name of that one uh, it has like a has like a one is it it's not x arm that's that's horrible no, that's another one. no. Um, what the fuck is it ah oh, okay, my brain let me check my history um oh wait let me check my pictures because i have i'm always forgetting because for i because Oh, oh, it's called OO Parts. That's what it was. OO Parts. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Okay. No, it's really cool. It's super cool. I love what they're doing. Again, it's like one of the most straightforward shonen structures for storytelling. 
Mm-hmm. But um, they also do this thing where, you know, the, the main character can get stronger and can sort of kind of copy abilities. And you think, okay, this is going to get out of hand because he's going to have, like, every power, blah, blah, blah. But they've done a good job in the last, like, 10 or 15 chapters of basically taking all everything you thought about the stakes of the fights that were happening and just like shaking them up in a little like you know like like just put them in a blender and so even though the main character has gotten more powerful in one respect like his straight up raw power the level of complexity of the fights that he's got to deal with has just like branched out and gone crazy so he's still at a major disadvantage so that's how they keep the shonen pace going in the story is by exploiting that uh that that tension or that um level of threat because that's a because that's the thing in shonen you get power creep very quickly and it's kind of hard to control that but they've done a pretty reasonable job now it's only like i think at 70 ish chapters so if you look at where he was in chapter one and where he's at in chapter 70, it could seem like it has gone crazy. But I think that they've managed to scale the world with him. So Okay, I'm, so I'm he has to it. get to that level to just survive. Well, like, you can copy whatever you want, but, like, he when he runs into people who've been using an ability their whole lives, it's like, he could just die if he uh, fucks up. <laughs> like, yeah. one fuck up and he's dead. Uh, and they make it very clear, and a lot of, and they are killing off some characters I didn't think they were gonna do. So I'm like, okay, all right, we're doing it. So nice. It's what's up. Yeah. Right. So that's pretty much it. I ain't got nothing, nothing crazy. Cool. Well, then that's that's it for this week, you yep. guys. So um, really surprised that y'all are like into like the three hour episode. Like y'all are actually like chunking it so thank you i know it's a lot to get through but um there's more coming with that so if you haven't already make sure you like comment subscribe give us a star rating or a like or you know how many everything on spotify apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, podbean wherever you're like give us a positive rating um and you know leave james alone in his dms if you yeah. feel something, put, <laughs> no, it up, been, put it in the comment been, section. Put it in the yeah, comment been, section. Yeah, put it, yeah, put that in public. Don't put, don't it put in that, public. Don't put but, that evil on me to, <laughs> have to but react. But you can find us on Anime underscore Savants and then just Anime Savants on YouTube, which you could be watching it on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, which also, like, with Instagram, Instagram is so weird. Some of y'all might be here from Instagram, which... I don't know why, but it feels like Instagram just like pushes our stuff like a week after the damn thing is posted. So, hey, if you're here a, a week later, you're probably hearing the, the, a different episode than what we talked about the thing. So if you're wondering what it's from, you can know you just ask us and I can tell you which episode that came mm-hmm. from. Yep. And you can always find me on Twitter at Neural Handshake doing the damn thing. You know, I know we're recording on Halloween and uh, mm. I got a lot of candy waiting for me upstairs. Well, hopefully, if the kids <laughs> have run run through it. Well, it's raining here. I don't know if it started raining. Well, it's eleven now, so no, it was some, it was good weather today. And uh, before we got on recorded, that we had a bunch of uh, young people come through, and uh, I I was lucky enough because there's the neighborhood is browner than I than I give it credit for, and a little black mm. kid came through, and I was playing some MF Doom. While I was setting up the house, and so he was the first one, so he got a bunch of candy, and he was like, "Yo, that that's just fire." I was like, "Yeah, bro." <laughs> yeah. Well, happy Halloween! No, not happy. Y'all aren't getting this on Halloween. Nah. I will see y'all next week. Bye. <laughs>